I need you to answer me a question, bro. Are there two Amamanias coming out? Amamania 5's coming out? I think so. You think so? Yeah. So why are there three codes to this? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to the Shoe Door Podcast, episode 85 with me and the bro, 808 Kicks ATL. I actually pointed the right way this time, which is great. But yes, <laughs> but yeah, please do like, follow, subscribe, come and chat to us. Let's have a conversation. Let's break it down. Please do actual um, put the notification bell on if you actually love us and actually rock with us. And also on top of that, please do actually go and share if you love the content. But episode 85, and um, you know, remember, guys, we are under all your platforms you can go and listen to us on google apple spotify all of that stuff as well and uh, obviously, our radio oh, uh, yes that's the one. Deezer, all yeah. of them we all know all of them all of them and also like i say guys um go and check us out on the show shoes go on insta tiktok um obviously youtube as well and yes um come come and just have a conversation with us but the main come question to YouTube. come to youtube please 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 come to youtube, YouTube. Yeah, definitely come to YouTube. Oh, and obviously, if you want to, when you listen to, sometimes we actually show some stuff on the podcast. You can actually go and um, tune it in and actually see the pictures, or go and research them up yourself, which is great because obviously you, we love to talk about stuff, and sometimes descriptions don't um, give the sneakers or the conversation justice. But you know, bro, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got we got to start adding links in our descriptions, and and I'm gonna say that right now on the pod, so we have to hold ourselves to it. Yep. Okay. Cool. That's fine. Add. Uh, we will be adding links to all of the descriptions and everything you want. Um, but guy, bro, why is the Amman Year Five got three star codes? It's got number one, the black variation SP. Number two, Amman Year Light Bone variation SP, and that was the rumored white variation that we was gonna get. And number three, then this is got bro, bro. This is on StockX because these style codes. If you if you type these style codes up, it actually comes up with the variation or the mock-up variation or a similar variation. But the style code exists for this sneaker. And number three is what the diffused women's exclusive that we've recently seen. So tell me, bro, why are they? Three style codes to this Nike style codes to the MMA Year Five. Apparently, it's gonna be three sneakers, bro. And I'm, I'm here <laughs> for it. I, I was, I was sitting there with um, Scott yesterday, and we, we after we talked about the Balvin Freeze, we're gonna talk about the Balvin Freeze in a bit. But we, after we picked up the Balvin Freeze. Bro, we were sitting there and I thought, well, you know what the next big release is that the Amman Year 5? And you know what our sneakerheads do? We go and tap into our favorite platform, have a look at what the resale is doing to give us a visual of the predictions of how good and well the sneaker is going to do. And that's what turned up because if you put Jordan 5 Amman Year, it doesn't come up. If you put Amman Year 5, this comes up. And bro, there's three star codes. Uh, to, like, like I said, the black star codes there, the uh, diffused blue white star codes there, and obviously now we've got a light bone star code. And that was the light bone variation with the burgundy shark teeth that we all saw and we all loved and we all was like, yo, that's going to be dope. But obviously it looks like it might be the diffused version. But there's three definite star codes, bro. Yeah, I'm with it. I'm with it, bro. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's looking like the diffused blue is a women's size release. Um, we know we yep. probably they we probably gonna get extended sizes. They always do extended sizes on these, um, yep. especially the, the threes and the twelves. You know, which were uh, women's releases. And yep. now they're yep. doing they're doing both. This will be the first time they actually do men's and women's at the same time, and three colorway. As long as I get the black one and one of the other ones, bro. 
Did did did, did the oh yeah because uh, both the twelves were feet, we, um, a women's exclusive as well. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, okay. bro, I, I can't believe that if they do if they are if they are doing three MMA year fives, <laughs> that's a situation, bro. <laughs> that's an actual situation because uh, I, I I still believe it's two pairs. I I personally believe it's two pairs. It's a black pair and the the diffused blue pair, which is obviously the women's exclusive. I still believe there's two, but I'm not discounting that the third pair might be some slight IPE or or a few friends and family exclusive but it might not even even exist but there is a style code for that version and I, that kind of surprised me yesterday and I thought you know what I'm going to start the podcast off with that just to kind of spice up the uh, excitement for these Amaminia Amaminia fights bro nah I'm, you ain't got to gas me up no more on this you know I've been <laughs> I've been waiting on this since since we predicted it early early this year we called it oh, a couple of weeks yeah. later we saw it and this is gonna end my year, bro. I might, I might not even want them gratitude eleven. I ain't gonna say want, but if I get, if I, if I end up with all three, I'm on my year fives. My year's done. Allegedly three. Let's just say allegedly three at the moment. Uh, it's a. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm probably the first person that I'm actually. I'm going with it. I'm going with it. I'm probably the first person that actually kind of. I think the Shudo podcast is the first place this has actually been announced. Like in terms of nobody really clocked on that there's free style codes to this at the moment. We know we clipping for Instagram this week, don't we? <laughs> that's great. That's crazy. Uh, but yeah, it's a beautiful thing, bro. It's always a beautiful thing, and um, I, I, I'm, I'm so in the sneaker space at the moment. My head's in the sneaker space at the moment. I'm, I'm really excited for what's coming um, for the end of this year and for the next year as well, bro. Like it's crazy. But like, how's your um week been, bro? Let's just talk about the week first. I had a good week at work. Um, had a eventful weekend so far. I'm chilling after this though. Um, Yesterday, I, I hit the Atlanta Food and Wine Festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me let me pull up let me pull up my IG real quick so I can give some shout outs. I gotta give some shout out. Um, the Food and Wine Festival. First of all, let me shout out the city of Atlanta. Um, we was outside, bro. Mm-hmm. And let me let me be candid right now. Most of the time, these events, these type of events are um, more populated by upper echelon-ish, bougie-ish mm-hmm. type of people. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was a lot more uh, integrated, I feel like, this year. Let me, okay. let me say that. It, it was, I saw a lot more um, eth- ethnicities I saw, I saw the real Atlanta in there. You know what I'm saying? And oh, it was a true yeah. representation of um the demographics in Atlanta. It was it was a b- big mixed crowd. It was no issues. Everything was cool. I want to give a shout out to uh Humano Vaca. <clears throat> they I, I don't know what you see the uh you see this right here? It's some look like some tea, it's some I don't know what they they said it was liquor. Now I, it didn't it didn't seem like it was no liquor. Now and this, oh, that, 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 that's that's the dangerous stuff, bro. That's very dangerous. Yeah, this, I've, this I've, I've strawberry the strawberry yeah. thing, bro. It it didn't taste like no. It was no liquor, now. bro. A, a quick 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 little story then about about what you just talked about. If be very careful about the alcohol that doesn't taste like alcohol when it's mixed in cocktails because when you have a rum punch, if you you can you, the rum punch. It's so sweet that you, it's got fruit mixes in it and stuff like that. But when you when you realize that your missus has put like three bottles of rum in that and mixed it with with, with like tropical juice, and you're like, okay, cool, I'm gonna drink this, and everybody's drinking this like it's tropical juice, not alcohol, because they don't like taste like alcohol, bro. And right at the end of the night, all of you looking at each other like, what just hit us on the, on the couch? Is like, what just hit us? Because I feel absolutely messed up, but we didn't drink anything, and then your missus. Comes and says she put rain nephew uh kraken and dark rum into into the into the rum punch and it absolutely knocked everybody out bro we were absolutely wasted that night and that that's that's Ooh. dangerous that, that's very dangerous bro 
the alcohol that don't taste like alcohol in the cocktail is very dangerous, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, well, shout out to uh, St. Julian. St. Julian Vineyard, uh, Neil. I should have got a picture with Neil. He's he's the pink shirted guy in the background right here. Super cool dude, man. Good watch. He had on a really good watch, too. I, I couldn't give him, yeah. I ain't give him no compliment on his watch, though. But <laughs> great watch. <laughs> great watch, great wine. Uh shout out to shout out to St. Julian, man. I'm on I'm on that. I need I need some of that St. Julian in my life. Uh and also yeah. remedy. Remedy, bourbon, whiskey. Bro, they got cinnamon, apple, and rye, right? <clears throat> so I took a shot of the apple. I'm like, oh yeah, this is smooth. And I don't, I don't like fire. Do y'all got fireball over there? No, I don't think I got, we got fireball over, there, over here. It's uh, cinnamon. Little, like people like to shoot it. It's sim. I think it's whiskey, but it's too harsh for me, right? Because I don't like spicy. I don't like nothing too spicy. Yeah, yeah. And I hit that cinnamon uh, remedy, bro. Oh my god, it tastes like candy, bro. It tastes like cinnamon candy, right? He said the dude say, no, nah, no. Nah. You got to put the apple and the cinnamon together. We call it apple pie. That's a man. Why? Why are you? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this right now? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. Oh, uh, bro. Talk, talking about apple pies. Um, we got um, we, we got Velvista, and Velvista is like a uh, a chocolate maker. So basically, it's a hot chocolate drink that you can make. Uh, put milk in it, put chocolate chips in it, and basically kind of let it run, and it kind of melts the chocolate, infuses it, and makes a nice hot chocolate. So we've got this from Hotel Chocolat. Hotel Chocolat obviously is a very famous like um chocolate selling company over here. I don't know if you guys got them over there. Oh, um, but. Um, no, so Hotel Chocolat is basically a very renowned chocolate place that we get like nice little bits. They do really special chocolates and stuff. So we we've, we've got the Velveta and that and um my girlfriend got her for her birthday because her mum got it for her. So she we've got it there and we start making hot chocolate. So her girlfriend's mum chose this um apple chocolate pie, right? So the apple pie with chocolate infused, um infusing chocolate. So my girlfriend made it and I thought we was gonna taste like chocolate, like like chocolate with a bit of hint of apple pie. No, bro. It's not doesn't taste of chocolate. It tastes of McDonald's apple pie, bro. And <laughs> listen, it's 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 two flavors. It's two flavors in this world. Actually, I'm I'm gonna go three. There's three flavors in this world that will overpower most things. Yeah. Third, third would be peanut butter, not peanuts. Oh yes, but peanut butter. Peanut butter. Yeah, that's third. Two. Apple. You put apple in anything and you're going to taste yeah. apple. I know what the first one is. What? Banana. 100%. You can have <laughs> you can have you can have some cookies, bro, wrapped in plastic. Yep. And you can sit, you can have them in a container, in a Tupperware container. And yeah. put a, you can sit a banana on top of the container. A, a raw banana still in the peel. You can just set it on top of the container and give it a day. Your cookies will taste like banana, bro. It's amazing. <laughs> Yo, bro, it, it's pretty much like um, the, the banana. It's got this little... Um, little at the least, uh, at the least they'll smell like banana. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's almost like this banana husk and shell. It's got these little army of little bacteria ants that or b- bacteria basically kind of fumigating constantly the food yeah. that you actually going to eat, bro. <laughs> bro, I used to make smoothies, right? I put I put yeah. the whole produce I put the whole produce session in my smoothie, bro. I put apple and banana in there, and it tastes like an apple banana smoothie, bro. It'd be dark green. <laughs> it'd be darker green than the underside of this hat. <laughs> it tastes like banana. <laughs> they just turned into a food podcast. <laughs> no, that's that's real talk, bro. It's just real talk. Real talk. Definitely. All right, but moving to few on. All right, cool. Um, we know this weekend what it was all about, right? We know this weekend was yeah. about these uh, Jay Balvin, Jordan Free, uh, Jordan Freeze, bro. 
that there's a there was a situation there, bro. Um, I'm gonna go into a bit of a story story time because um I said I had a very good story about this and it's, it was crazy. So basically, in the morning, picked up. Uh, in the morning, basically went went over to our spring, which where I was able to cop, and then we we were basically running through, got got the sneakers, and then just chilling there. And then we were, you know what? I had another pickup from SNS because I've, I like I helped out uh, one of the bros, and basically I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go. Well, let's go pick the sneaker up. So on the way there, we went there, and literally then the start, news started coming out that in the states. Um, they were shut down for the J Balvin Jordan Freeze, right? And there was information about how I think in New York one of the shops got shut down for oh. the J Balvin's, and that that happened. And then, um, and it was, it was funny thing was we went all the way to SNS, picked up picked up the pairs, we walking down, and then um, one one of the guy one of the bros was like, you know what, we got four J Balvin's here, right? So let, let's let's uh, let's basically take a picture. Let's start taking some pictures. We just on the, just in, in the streets. Uh, went went we went on the back road and basically put put all the sneakers up. Put started like literally, um, like, like literally taking pictures. I think t- trying to post a show should just say, oh yeah, uh, one thank you, blah 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 to the companies or the, the people that dropped the sneakers and stuff like that. And then um, somebody suggested we put uh, we put some pictures up for the J Bow and Jordan Freeze, like resellers do for a joke. Right, and then we was like, "All right, that's fine." Um, so let's do, let's let's do that. And then we said we won't post it; it was just for a joke for a rainy day. And then all of a sudden, they'll post this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Dell, you 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 are you're trying to get us into a hurt of trouble, bro. You're trying to get us into a hurt of trouble because, like, if somebody saw that, somebody's gonna complain. Because a lot of people, to be honest, a lot of people uh, missed out on the J Bow and Jordan Freeze. I think we we were definitely wrong about that. I'm gonna say we we were definitely wrong about that sneaker because it, it kind of like, um, it kind of like was super limited. Um, I think for uh, from what I'm hearing, the UK could have got anywhere between four to four to four to nine k worth of pairs on the sneakers app. That's nothing. Um, and in the morning, because I because I'm trying to help Jenny out as well, and I think Del was trying to help Jenny out because Del had his pair, and a couple of other people tried to help Jenny up. I literally put it in, and within seconds, it, it threw me back and said, "Sit down." It's a literally see because I was like, "Sit down. You ain't got in the pair." <laughs> within, seconds, bro. within seconds so that was crazy but another couple of things happened as well i uh, went went into size and uh, we, we i know like me and del know the guy in size that works there he's, he's quite a nice he's quite a safe guy he let me see the play your face bro <laughs> <laughs> early in hand um I'm I'm definitely getting this this weekend. That that playoff eight is absolutely beautiful, bro. Beautiful sneaker. And then um Dell got to see his Air Max one um size exclusives, which was the brown pair. Um what? you don't see them. No. Uh, so there's a there's a sneaker there's a sneaker coming out uh, which is limited to size uh, size, which is a boutique place. Yeah. And um it's it's uh, basically uh, Air Max one, which is the brown suede toe. Um, I'm just trying to pull this up now, um, and it's brown suede toe. It looks it looks amazing, and El was able to put his size on feet just to see how it looked. Come on, <laughs> they might well so, they might well let him get it. Um, I I am I am trying oh. to get this as a speak. bro. If you, if you, that is magnificent, bro. <laughs> yeah, absolutely coming out on size uh, this weekend. Um, and I was like to Del, bro, we're going in. And if I can't, I'm lining up for you in the morning to pick this sneaker up for you, bro. That is a hard sneaker. That is really nice. Dope. And on feet, on feet looks top. Off, yeah, or on feet, my, looks top. Uh, is there a name for it? Probably just going to be brown. It's size, or yeah, it's, it's just a size exclusive, size um, Air Max one. Okay, size Air Max One, size un- with a question mark. For yep. for those in the US that don't know, size is a store in the UK. Um, size question mark. It's I Z E yep. question, question mark is um, where you should look for this Air Max One. 
Yeah, it is it is a dope dope sneaker. And then obviously we were talking with the guy, we were talking about um we were talking to the guy uh, that worked there and who we was talking about how um some of the so like the limitations that Nike puts on uh, actual collaborations and when you when you when you kind of give them the, some designs and aspects and basically um they 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 kind of like say no we're not doing that you have to kind of keep refining it i think when he was talking a similar experience with adidas adidas let you have free reign literally let you do whatever they want with a sneaker so he, like is there was a quite it was an inter- interesting conversation an like, interesting uh, deep dive into the inside uh, market of collaborations with other brands it was quite interesting to be honest and like, like bro even in even in sns bro even in sns um I, I asked one of the guys that I know in SNS, um, and he was like, "We only had a f- one full size run again for the Bavins, just like the unions." It's crazy. Bro, they, they they protect y'all. Like I'm sitting here yeah. thinking about it. Like I really dislike the UK stores because they protect y'all. It's, it's the real reason why I dislike them. They they won't let us. They don't let us swoop in and buy up sizes. You know what I mean? Oh, you the you the US, yeah, they yeah, yeah. They're, yeah they're, kind of, they're not they're not letting us hit on raffles like that. You know what I mean? They were before. They were before. They were before, but now they protecting y'all. They ain't. Yeah. whether but, whether whether it's the government issue or you know choices that they making for the for the sake mm-hmm. of the UK uh, sneaker culture, y'all protected from from uh, the US for the time being. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was another other interesting conversation um i was having is the the guy in size was actually yeah. saying um shout out to the bro he knows who he's the guy the guy in size was actually saying um doing raffles is difficult because basically what they end up doing is checking like especially in the uk checking if you're a if you're a valid uh like sneakerhead if you're not a reseller they're trying to not give sneakers to resellers and he would say the amount of effort and work you have to kind of go through to make sure that these people are actually buying sneakers to put on their feet rather than reselling them is quite difficult and then like did people don't realize how difficult it is to actually run raffles especially these boutiques too and and to then kind of make sure that it goes to the right people and doesn't go to resellers because obviously they want to get make sure the sneakers go to the right people and this is what i think this is some of the things that they want to the boutiques do in terms of trying to provide the sneakers to the real people in the sneaker community as well as other people that they they kind of um ha- kind of making sure um they're not got resale pages um so going through their accounts validating that they're, they're kind of real sneakerheads rather than people that are going to just take advantage of the system bro he was just saying yeah it's difficult plus also you got to have the backlash of everybody trying to say oh yeah um i didn't get a pair or i didn't get a pair or i didn't get a pair all of that stuff bro like it's it's crazy like well uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't let me hit so i mean i i hit on <laughs> end i hit i hit a pair of dunk highs uh was the michigan yeah. dunk it was either the Michigan or the Spartan. One of them I hit on in. Um, I hit the fives, the uh, what the fives on in, and I hit the red flints on in, and I got the my Sashiko fours from BSTN, and that's it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, that that's only the in-store raffles where you have to come pick up sneakers. The, the, the other ones that you, uh, that's on like online that just doesn't have in-store pickups, they just kind of give it to anybody they want. To be honest, kind of. Yeah, kind I of think, at this point, I think Powder is the only store that still does like worldwide worldwide online releases for us. Yeah, the overseas store, and they they uh they're EU, they're not UK. Yeah, yeah, they, they you, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. But the, U, the UK <laughs> stores, the UK stores, they ain't letting us in, boy. <laughs> 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 but um, before before we get started, before we get started, shout, um, out. <laughs> shout out to uh, let's give a shout out to everybody's favorite sneakerhead or not, Fat Joe, Terra Squad, Air Force One. Don't call it the P word. It's not the P word, and it's not the average Air Force One. You can believe that. Yeah, that 
That was that was immaculate. That sneaker's immaculate. I saw it on, on the weekend uh, with, um, I think, Scott put, picked him up. But also, SNS still has a size 11, a US, a UK size 11 in, in that in store. That was the last one they had on the weekend. So that probably's gone now. But yeah, that, 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 that did well. That did well. Definitely well. You ain't cut? Nah, nah, nah. The uh, Air Force Ones respect the story, respect the history. I just don't wear Air Force Ones, bro. Yeah, I was born in 82. I feel like I should love Air Force Ones because it was born the same year as I, as I was. But uh, that midsole, I just can't get over the midsole. When I get up in hand, bro, the midsole always kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boy, it's too fat. Too much meat on that midsole, boy. <laughs> when they do, when they drop the diet when they drop the diet Air, well the dunk is the diet Air Force One so that's why I like dunks yeah. more than Air Force One and Jordan <laughs> ones too the midsole is slimmer like that's the thing about Air Force One bro that's why I didn't mind too much the uh, the Air Force One with the uh, air bubble even though yeah. it's got a it's got a lunar sole and the midsole is even bigger. Being able to see the air in the Air Force One makes sense to me. We know it's air unit in there. It's air, and it say air right there in the back. But uh, yeah, 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 man. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna I don't think I'm gonna keep them, dog. It didn't didn't um, Fat Joe give Bill Clinton a pair of Air Force Ones this week? No, did he? Yes, yeah, yes, yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's that, that, quite interesting. That's quite interesting to see, bro. Like, fat Joe giving a pair of uh, Air Force One travel squads to Bill Clinton. I don't know if Bill Clinton. I think Bill Clinton actually put my feet over for a picture as well. Listen, bro. Fat Joe has elevated himself to a place where probably nobody foresaw him uh, reaching. From Joey Crack, the notorious yeah. street rapper that was known for running around terrorizing New York City <laughs> to TV shows, daytime TV shows. Mm-hmm. You hear me? And Nike yeah. finally, finally giving him the collab after 20 years, almost 20 years. Um, I mean, it's just so much respect, bro. It's, it's, it's mm-hmm. as, as New York would say, it's mad respect. To Fat Joe, yeah, for what he been able to accomplish, bro. But I don't think it was I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> you know, I'm not a habit, just a habit type of guy, though. Yeah, you're like me. I, I, that's why. That's my response with with somebody that's asking me now. I'm not picking up the terror squad. So no, bro. I, I respect you. I love. I love the story. Flat, shout out to Fat Joe for like kind of getting to where he is. Like he, that. He's he's the epitome of keep working hard, keep grinding, keep keep level, keep pushing, and then you will get to where you want to get to. And he's like basically achieving everything he wants to achieve. And that's that's the that's the moral of the story in life. You gotta keep persistent. But if, shout out to Fat Joe. Shout out to the story. Shout out to the sneaker. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm not even saying it's it's the horror. Or anything like that. It's an amazing sneaker, but like you're in the same vein as me. And when anybody says to me why I didn't pick up the terror squad, because I don't wear Air Force Ones. Tell me Air Force yeah. One in my in my in my collection. There's none or my rotation. There's none. Off whites. You got the off whites, like, don't you? Not not how good off white Air Force Ones? Yeah. Timberland. I've got the Timberlands. No, you got off white Air Force Ones. The mids. Nah. Yes, you had two bro. pairs. One of them was your size. No, no I, I don't. I don't. I don't remember that, bro. I don't. I ain't off white Air Force One mids, the ones with the spikes on them. You didn't get that in your size. No, the that's that one. was for him. No, that the that black and white was for the bro. I got that review that I gave it to the bro. He wanted it. I thought you had two pairs. No, no, I've never had an Air Force One, bro. Never had an Air Force One in my rotation. Ever. I could have I could have sworn you had two <laughs> pairs of that shoe and you kept one. Nah, never, bro. Okay. I, I, I that the, the one with the spikes I've got for the uh, A London, which is the bro. He actually, he yeah, actually yeah, yeah. kind of shout out A London too. Yeah, yeah, shout out the bro. He actually he actually reached out to me, wanted to pay because he was working, and I, I actually cop for him. That was quite an easy cop, and then that was the only one I had, and I gave it to him. Okay. I thought um, you had yeah, I yeah. thought you had your size. No, no, no. 
I just, bro, I haven't I haven't worn an Air Force One. I, I I just they're a beautiful sneaker. They're they're an absolute tank of a sneaker, but I I I don't wear Air Force Ones at all. Yeah, me neither. I ain't bought this is the first <laughs> this is the first money I've paid for an Air Force One in my size. Cause my niece like Air Force One, so she she just got a, a fresh white pair for her uh, for her birthday. But uh yeah, yeah. This is my first time paying for uh, Air Force One Air Force. in my size for uh, since 1997. Oh, damn. damn. The cool gray. The cool gray mids with the jewel swoosh. To this day, that's probably still my favorite Air Force One. Ooh, damn. Tenth grade. That's, that's I, that was my first. That was my first day of school sneaker. Cool gray Air Force One Mids with the jewel swoosh. I gotta find a picture. Anyway, let's get to the uh, oh, I ain't even gonna show you how to pick. I'm gonna find this picture for me. Yeah, but be, but before we move on, I just wanna I'm talking just about the Balvins again. Did you see this, bro? Did you see the Air Max One custom for the J Balvins? That's better than that uh that four that Big Almighty did. Really? Yeah, I ain't like that for. <laughs> that's dope. I, I, a lot of people were gassed when they when they actually saw this. That's dope. Yeah, that's I'm fine. Just that's, dope. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Go and check out the Air Max One J Balvin custom. That is absolutely fire. Absolutely fire. So moving on to quick strikes, bro. Shall we have a look? Shall we have a look at this? Um, this absolutely beautiful, 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 beautiful looking um no yep mi casa es su casa tu sabes that was actually shown um by jazz chism um on um of, of this weekend and a lot of people because I, I my spidey senses were tinkling tingling this week and i was like i wonder what's happened to the jordan 8 uh soul fly uh would you call it um diamond turfs and uh and i was like i seen we see this picture with i know it's december sometime december is going to come out we've seen this pictures of this like navy Navy version of almost like a playoff eight, but it's just got this soul fly gold tag, and underneath it's got like a diamond turf cut out see through panel. And I wonder where this is. And then on the next day, bro, um, we see the soul fly Jordan 8 kind of feature. I was like, wow, I had my spider sense of tingling, but damn, they, they a whole new different colorway came out of that sneaker. I don't even think it's diamond turf. I just think this is this is a Jordan Soulfly at Jordan Eight. If if it's Diamond Turf, it's off. Um, yeah. <laughs> sometimes we 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 can't be running with these narratives, these thrown these thrown out narratives. You know what I'm saying? The gold yeah. on the gold on the. Um, on the blue one, ain't no, ain't no OG, ain't no blue OG diamond turf. So the gold on that blue Soulfly Jordan Eight that people were calling diamond turf is probably part of the reason, along with the little bit of red and a little bit of white. But it's a blue shoe, bro. It don't make sense to uh, call it a diamond turf. Yeah. And after seeing this, and this, you know, this a uh, legit, this official, this actually uh somebody that we can believe that this sneaker is real yep it, it ain't looking like no diamond turf it's looking like something totally different it's still dope i wish it was diamond turf inspired because i love Deion sanders and diamond turfs but the same this this is this is just some other dope sneakers that soul flyer doing and we're gonna keep yeah. rolling with it because we both like eights and we both respect soul fly so we can start with the diamond turf stuff. Unless yeah, they- yeah, yeah. But I, 
I like I like this Mikasa Sukasa. I want to see what the storyline behind that is because underneath the flaps you've got the Mikasa Sukasa. If you don't really know what it means, it's my home is your home. That's what basically meaning is. Um, but I'm, I'm actually looking forward to this. I, want, I think these both are samples. The two things, the two so fly Jordan 8s we've seen, I think they're both samples. I don't think we've seen the real picture. Um, this could be a friends and family. It could be anything. At, at the moment, it's all up in the air. Right. Until we see official pictures, until we see uh, the release date for this is apparently either the 23rd or 27th of December. So I don't know. It's either the two of those dates. Well, I remember for a date being after Christmas. I don't know what sneaker that was, but it could be before Christmas, which is I think is the right one. And when I posted this, and when I posted my thoughts about the, uh, the Diamond Turf Jordan Eight, so um, play up uh, the Jordan Eight Soul Flies. So I I tag Soul Fly, and they like both of those pictures, bro. So there's definitely something coming. There's yeah. definitely something coming. I'm surprised they actually like my pictures because so, I'm just a I'm just a person across the border requesting Soulfly Jordan Eights and they liked it. So um, there is definitely Mentions. a Jordan Eight Soulfly. Hmm? Mentions. The, they, were mentions, they, mentions, they, yeah, they were they were they were in their mentions around the, the time that you posted and they saw it and they appreciated. It. I, I appreciate yeah, exactly. you for, for appreciating you. <laughs> yeah, exactly, but I want to. I want to. I want to definitely see what these Jordan Eight Soulfly looks like. I'm excited. I, I hope it comes out this Christmas. If it doesn't, it's going to come out beginning or mid next year. But this is uh, like Soulfly dropped the Soulfly Thirteen. That was magnificent, and I've got it. So I, I'm definitely looking to this eight. I want more Jordan Eights, bro. I just I want more Jordan Eights. I was really uh, excited to see the this weekend. I want to go back and look at them Soulfly Tens too. I'd be forgetting about those. Them, them was hard. And they might not be yeah. going for that much. Um, staying on sports for the next quick strike. First of all, I want to say shout out to Dion again. They took a big L to Oregon. Oregon is a powerhouse school. Uh, Colorado ain't there yet. Um, they were big underdogs. Everybody expected them to lose. And they they did. They, the talent level is different at Oregon. Oregon is a um, a known winner. A lot of people love that school. We know Oregon for, um, you know, the connection with Nike. And mm-hmm. Oregon, bro, I, I just want to say I'm still on the bandwagon. I don't care. I don't care what happened for the rest of the season. If they don't win no more games for the rest of the season, I'm still riding with Colorado. So, um, whatever. But, <laughs> um, Oregon done done it again, though. Oh, oh! They got dunk oh. low cleats with the thermal heat pack pattern shit from the civilist dunk. Civilist, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, they converted <clears throat> like almost the civilist dunk into a cleat. They did. They just they left some of the panels black. They left the underlays black. And they made uh, the swoosh white, and they went with yeah. white laces. Yo, I'm I'm so sick of Oregon with the cheat code. <laughs> like every, I'm gonna tell you what Oregon do. In case you're not aware, I'm gonna tell you what Oregon can, will, and has done throughout the history of their partnership with Nike. Because we know Nike started yeah. in Oregon, right? Nike will send Oregon. They got 12 games, right? And if they do well enough, they got a bowl game. Nike will send these folks 13 different uniforms and helmets. Uniforms and helmets. 13 different. You ain't, hold on. Hold on. Y'all understand what I'm saying. Y'all, y'all don't understand what I'm saying about Oregon. Don't oh, break it down, bro. Every single game. They wear a uniform that nobody has ever seen before. <laughs> and a helmet that nobody has ever seen before. Yeah. And they don't wear it again. Because they got a different one next week and a different one next week and a different. Like, bro, you never know what Oregon going to come out there looking like. You know it's going to be black, white, yellow, or green. But you yeah, don't know yeah, what yeah. they're going to come out there looking like, bro. The, the helmets, the helmet that they that they got with this uniform. Look at the helmet, bro. Carbon fiber with duck wings on it, like just like on the jersey. They got green carbon for, like, bro. They Oregon is unstoppable, man. 
do, do, do you think Oregon's got the like the yes. best yeast? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was instant, bro. He was like, don't even ask that question, bro. That's not even no. a question you should be answering at this moment in time, bro. No, because because it's easy to say UNC also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Oregon, bro. Like when you think think about the, the Oregon fours. No, you don't uh, need to think about it. Let's have a look at them. Look at that, bro. No, <laughs> but these <laughs> <laughs> not 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 even let's not count the five let's not count the fly ease like only pe six the two eights the sixes i think it's two sixes i think it's a white one yeah yeah seven, seven with the six, six, six. um bro look at all the st- the basketball stuff like we don't need to look at them foes the white <laughs> the white well, we don't even talk about the white foes 13 yeah, I, Bro, threes. The original Oregon dunks, bro. Uh, Oregon fires, bro. Ducks. Yeah, the one with the actual duck on the back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the thirteens, the fours, the th- oh, bro. That's what I'm like, saying. Uh, the tinker, the tinker <laughs> Oregon. Yeah, you know what I mean, yes, yes. Hey, look at the Harachis, bro. They actually got a pair of Harachis. Oregon gets everything. Every shoe yeah. that Nike make, if you play sports at Oregon. You can get whatever shoe you want, bro. And that's in current, that's in production. I'm pretty sure you can go holler at the equipment manager and be like, hey, bro, I want some, I want some dunks. I want some this, I want some that. Or they might, they might have take a vote. They probably they it's Oregon. More than likely they have a Nike person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that caters strictly to the school and the different teams and their needs. You know, so I can only imagine what some of these coaches, bro. Imagine being the equipment manager. At Oregon, bro. So, so ima- imagine you imagine you're a sneakhead, right? At this moment in time, and you had a chance to pick any team, and you're like, you know what? Um, I just uh, my aspirations. Oh, you, you get you go into interview, and you go into like um, you go into Oregon interview or something like that, and he goes, "What's your aspirations? My aspirations is to work for you, whatever capacity you want me to. If you want me to clean the bins." If you want me to clean the t- clean the equipment, if you want me to play football, if you want me to kind of even shine your shoes, I will do that. Just give me the sneakers that I have because I want the sneakers. They're the best sneakers in the world. These are PAs. I just want to be part of the team. Please pick me. That's pretty much what you're going to be saying as a Listen, sneaker, bro. bro. Listen, bro. <laughs> when, it come, when it come to colleges, either Oregon or UNC. Ohio State, yeah. got, Ohio State got, some, got some nice stuff, too but nowhere near as much as UNC. And I don't think UNC, the alma mater of the Bastard Goat, even got as much as Oregon because the Nike guys went to Oregon. It's, it all started. Yeah. Nike started at Oregon. From Oregon. Yeah, yeah. That's the home, the hub, the the, the central. Yeah. That, that's basically where it was bro, going. So, yeah, bro, they, Tinker went to Oregon. Bro. <laughs> That's all you need to say, bro. Bill That's Knight. all you ever need to say. Yeah, no. Bill Knight went to Bill Bow, Oregon. They all they met at Oregon. So yeah. <laughs> so Taker that, was that, an art yeah. student at, at Oregon. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but that, that that makes sense because basically it's kind of highlighting. Um, it's giving homage to where you came from. I think a lot. Of, as, that's what it's always about, to be honest. In terms of the brands, they always give homage to how the creators, where it came from, and everything like that. So, yeah, Oregon. Yeah, that was that was a quick response from you, bro. You like, you know, Oregon. That's it. You don't even need to say it. Oregon gets the best PEs. It's the Nike school, dog. It's the yeah. Nike school. This the Nike started there, but. I got you right here. Okay, bro. Because you better. You better get these mischief uh, boy boys for your... For your, there, there, there's, a, there's history behind this. Um, I need to work out how to get this because... My, it's dropping, I'm, I'm, I'm it's sitting, dropping Wednesday. I know it's dropping Wednesday. I don't know if it's going to drop on the Reebok website either or if it's just going to be mischief. And I don't know if mischief actually kind of shipped to the UK as well. Because um, my girlfriend was like... The, on the weekend I like those Mischief's new sneakers I, what do you mean Missy? what ones oh the Reebok ones I said that's the one she wants that's the ones the suede yellow suede light blue um, she basically uh, that advert's quite funny as well that, that advert's too, they got, too funny they got D Brown and his son Anakin Brown yes D Brown named his son Anakin <laughs> 
<laughs> for those of y'all that don't know, me and TJ both uh, rock with Star Wars. Anakin is Darth Vader's <laughs> real name. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. D Brown and Anakin Brown are in the uh, ad. D Brown, Slam Dunk Champion. He won the Slam Dunk Championship in the Rebot Omni Pumps. So yeah. this, this makes complete sense from Mischief. Seven, no, nine pumps. I'm sorry, nine pumps. <laughs> Bro, my girlfriend was like, I like these mischief, I, but I don't know what one I'm going to choose because I like the I like the leather version, I like the suede version. I want and I, we we settled on the suede version, not this version, but the, the suede yeah, version, yeah. um, which is more of a yellowy tone to it. She likes it a lot, and I was like, "Are you serious?" And she's yeah, yeah. I want I want the boy boings, uh, these, these ones. Um, I want the boy boings because sun I like bleached. the color of it. Okay? Some bleach colorway. Yeah, some bleach colorway. Uh, she, I like, I like it. It's really cute. I want it. And I was like, why do you want these? I, I, I don't want to be running through hoops to try and get this for you. She goes like, but yeah, but truth. you can try. It. We, no, 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 no. You can stop <laughs> all that right now. Because what you're saying is she want this shoe, so we gonna get this shoe. <laughs> I don't know what you talking it about. Looks, it looks like it, bro. <laughs> I don't know what you talking about. You tripping. <laughs> you, it looks like it, bro. you need to relax. You know we getting this. <laughs> you know what is really funny? Is say say we, we get, getting this. We, we're trying to get this. No, 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 no. Say we getting it. Say it. <laughs> we getting it. <laughs> we, we getting, getting it. it. <laughs> Two fifty. They drop day after the podcast airs. <laughs> Wednesday the twenty seventh. What size? What size she wear? Say it. Say it. Say it on the broadcast. What's seven seven US seven US six UK. Seven, <laughs> uh, this is seven youth or seven women or what? Seven women, seven no seven seven men's US men seven. Okay. <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> no, we solving this problem because all you gotta do, all you got, I'm, I'm not letting you, I'm not letting you get away from this. Oh, uh, you got to do this. This is the mission official website that we're looking at right now. I will send right. you the link. I will gladly send you the link. All you have to do is go on there and see if you can purchase something and if they will ship it to you. Yeah. If you, can, if, if you can buy something from the website that comes straight to your house, then you should be good to go. They're going to probably sell out pretty quickly. They will sell out. They will sell out. Um, you know what? I'm down for this gimmick. I, I know a lot of people are. are, are, are you know, cutting their nose at it in terms of like, yeah, that's not that's rubbish. But I'm down for this. Like, I was talking about it. Yeah, bro. They they look look good good on feet. <laughs> you know what? We we um we did a re- we we're gonna issue a, a video to tomorrow, which is about reacting to so uh Anvil. Um <clears throat> so basically we're gonna have a look at some of the some of the what do you call it, the mischief uh wavy baby. But um but bro, like in terms of them coming a long way, they have come a long way because they're actually legitimizing their actual collaborations. It's no longer an art piece, it's more of a yeah, you can wear these if you want to now. These these look more wearable than the wavy babies like we we just saw the wavy babies they they wasn't the inside of them wasn't legit hopefully the inside of the, nope. hopefully all them pumps work i imagine super pump <laughs> i don't know but it's them 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 going to get d brown like they got him recreating obviously this is a farce right this this picture but yeah, yeah. that's you know the uh the the cover eyes dunk that he did to win the dunk contest back in the day they got him yeah. recreating that with the pumps on, and that's actually his colorway. His his son got the uh, the orange colorway on, and he's wearing the yellow the sunblock. Yeah, the some beach blast or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm I'm in, I'm intrigued. I, I'm gonna if I do if I do when I do get this in hand, I, I'm gonna have a proper test it out and see how it is. Um, I'll get I'll let my missus do the on feet and and wear them and and kind of tell me how comfortable they are. But she she loves stuff like that. Like I know uh, it's it's aesthetics, it's the design she loves. She loves to kind of look at stuff and she thought they were cute. So and you can't deny um uh, your missus or your partner basically saying, oh I like these and they're cute, and then you can't not pick them up from. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, Rebus is always good for small feet, too. Yeah. Uh, moving on to next quick swipe, bro. 
Uh, did you see this the other day, this week? It's basically Jordan Brand held a basketball tournament in the middle of the lake uh, in, in Slovakia, uh, so some in Slovenia, uh, to celebrate the launch of Luka. Do, do, I can't even say his second name. I always get this wrong. Go on, go on. Luka, Luka Doncic, um, his new Jordan, uh, Jordan Luka 2 sneaker. Uh, what do you think of this, bro? This is wow. Um, the shoe is cool. Yeah, let's go back to the shoe. The shoe is cool. I like it. Yeah, it's cool. That's that's a great photo, by the way. But yeah. uh, Jordan Brand, Jordan <laughs> Brand, good for this. <laughs> Jordan Brand is good. What in the? <laughs> well, what, what we're literally seeing is uh, somebody, somebody they, they don't actually play basketball, and somebody just leaped into the water. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we know that's that's one hundred percent playing content. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. Jordan Brand at this point is out doing Nike so bad, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doing events and think about um. Think about the amount of advertisements for stuff like this. Like when Jordan roll roll out their signature sneakers, they give the athletes as much attention as MJ would have had when he was rolling out his signature sneakers. Yeah, they give the same energy. This is what I like about Jordan Brand. They give the they give the same energy to all the athletes. Like Michael Jordan was the leading example. They actually invested all of their um, like kind of career on on Michael Jordan, and it really worked out. And this is why it's it's, it's such one of the best success success, success stories in uh, in in like the actual sneaker industry. Nike Nike leaned in on uh, Sabrina. They they really yeah. leaned in on her really hard, but. Yeah. Um, I want to see how hard they gonna lean in on book, and they lean on they lean on job pretty hard before his controversy, but um, I want to see moving forward how far they gonna go with Jordan Brand doing stuff like this. Is this campaign better than the Mac attacks? Yeah. Okay, it's it's, it's more of a sporting. I, I like. I'm, I'm well, they did pickleball. They did pickleball for the Mac attacks, and pickleball is like. Yeah a big trending thing right now in the U.S. So it, the building of a damn basketball court on a raft. That's, that's dope. That's dope. That's next level, bro. That's next definitely, level. Definitely next level. Well, moving on quickly, bro. I'm going to talk about Sandy Bodecker. Basically, it looks like he's, um, he's sneaker or he's 1985 sample dunks are for auction or up for auction. I want to know your opinion on these first, bro, because these look good, bro. These look dope. Look at those. Yeah, the colorway ain't hitting me, really. They hard, their leather look real good, though. Really yeah, I know. Really that, 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 it's Sandy Bodecker, bro. Like, what, yeah. what, what do you want me to say? Bro, nothing. I'm just letting you know this. This is up for auction. I don't know how much he's gonna get because obviously, the, the, it it just shows you how, even at this moment in time, that I don't think this has ever been worn, bro. But even at this moment in time, um, the the, the quality and the lever, you can see the differences between this and what we get nowadays. Because this is from 1985, bro. You know what? SB don't mean skateboard no more. It means Sandy no. Bodek. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It don't mean skateboarding. I'm pretty sure I ain't the first person to say that. But at this point, with with something like this coming coming around, yeah, it's been. Will you, will you ex- uh, how will you expect this to go for now? <laughs> As a collector, it. you can't call it. Uh, if you if you're an OG if you're an OG skater this means more to you than a price tag so I can't really call mm-hmm. it yeah, Sandy yeah. Bodecker's PE signed PE sample mm-hmm. from 85 nah there ain't no price for this man it's, I would say I would say for a sneaker it's pretty much priceless. With his signature on it, nah, bro. Ain't yeah. no price for this, bro. Ain't no price for this. 
I agree with that. That's 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 amazing. That is literally amazing. That I, I when I came across the story, I was like, wow. The, like the the, the the sneaker just looks like it's uh, you can. It's almost forty years old, but the sneaker looks it, bro. The sneaker is so vintage out. It just looks classic. It's like a classic. Yeah, yeah. It still look good too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But moving on, next week's fight, bro. I just want to bring this to your attention. This was actually a big thing this week, which was StockX Express shipping, a guarantee a three day turnaround on pre authorized products. And it looks like um, basically StockX will be shipping um, really quickly. I don't know if this is outside the States or just in the States at the moment, but it looks like they will really quickly shipping your orders that are pre authorized. So basically, it means that some of the stocks that they've actually got it they've actually bought from uh, from your apps and actually have them pre-authorized there and then actually selling them so it means like they are they are maneuvering like a a uh, reselling company rather than a middleman just to check your sneakers they've been a listen bro this should not no, but this this is no, 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 no. now officially this is this is officially like we are selling so, sneakers out of our, yeah. so this this should no. not be getting this should not be getting as much attention as it's been getting over the past couple of days, I didn't seen this like eight times on my Instagram feed. Granted, I don't scroll for long. I might scroll for two, three minutes at a time, uh, periodically throughout the day. But I keep seeing this popping up, all the publications posting it like it's, and I get it, right? Mm -hmm. Media is media. Stories, you know, you're going you're gonna to post them. I didn't need to see this. This is, this is my opinion, right? I did not need to see this. No, buy, resale enough to care, really. Secondly, this ain't nothing new. This is StockX being behind the eight ball. Goat been doing this for years. The fact that stock it, when StockX took the word, um, what was it, guaranteed, or when they when they yeah, changed yeah. the verbiage on the authentication front, on the authentication they, guaranteed went right. They say they changed the verbiage, but they're not changing the process, right? This goat been doing this, bro. Flight Club been doing this. It's consignment. That's all it is. It's online consignment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's online video. consignment. So, this ain't nothing no. revolutionary. This ain't nothing groundbreaking. Goat has been doing this for years where as a seller, you can send the product in without having a sale, an active sale. You can just send it to mm -hmm. them to hold. They all authenticate it and they, they hold it. You as the buyer pay an extra fee pretty much for the storage. Yeah. Um, if you, if you, to, to, you, could, you could go in there and search a sneaker and buy it for um, 200 and you have to wait the two or three weeks for it to ship to them and get authenticated. Sneakers that they already have in stock that are prior uh, pre-authenticated is what they call it. Pre-approved, yeah, pre-authenticated. Pre-verified. Pre pre-verified pre -verified, music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verified yeah. sneakers, the, you you would pay two fifty or two sixty for it. So you got to give them an extra fifty or sixty dollars to get it faster. This raises this raises but additional questions for me personally because the they, sneakers that they already got. Yeah, but this raises this raises a, a question to me. Um, uh, several questions. Number one, number one is obviously I'm going to read the statement. Express ship items have been pre-verified through our multiple stop verification process from our teams of expert authenticators. No more sellers slaking out on their items or selling sets of actually selling their items. But my my question arises is: Are you prioritizing these listings over other other actual listings? So my are you kind of just I'm I'm just that's I'm just kind of thinking to like are you like like for instance like right this moment in time if some if an order comes in from a certain from a certain person like say you want to sell something on StockX and you put it up for less than what it's been listed do StockX immediately buy it and if they do buy it that's that's their stock they actually pre-verified and they'll list your product for the second to third list of the entire product so basically what I'm trying to do is what I'm trying to say is subconsciously 
is that control in the market where if you put a listing up that's lower than the, than the list that they've got, do they automatically buy it and raise the price of it to match the listing that's no. on, their, on their site already? I, I don't know. I doubt, I severely doubt that because it's still market-based. It's still market based, but then you like from a from a stock ex or a company point of view, you have more control of that market because Bro, um, no, like, you like don't. Saying, no, 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 stop. Don't you like I just said, we giving stock ex too much power, bro. They don't control nothing. They don't, bro. They buy they 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 buy us. They don't buy a product. But, okay, no, no, no. They are, so third, if it's, they are a third party. They are a third party. The market is the market. If they... I, no, check it out. Here you go. How much sense would it make for StockX or GOAT or any other reseller? That's why consignment is a thing. Because the market fluctuates. If this shoe is going for X amount, and I, I'm trying to sell it for cheaper. Who's to say the price won't go down? That's a hell. Mm-hmm. It, they, it's way too many sneakers in circulation in the aftermarket for them to be taking L's like that. That's why resellers had to start trying to take shoes back to the store because of market fluctuation. Stock Ace ain't stupid. They're not going to do that. They're not going to let us get away with selling them bricks and the price going to tank. They're not crazy. I know. I know. Is the, that's I, not, I, they're not. They're not a reseller. They're a reselling platform. I I just I understand that. I'm I'm just basically. To, this is why I'm 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 a bit cynical. I'm very cynical because now the more I think about it, the more uh, more questions I have. Where is StockX telling us that we can send our sneakers in for consignment? Go, you can go on the site and do it, bro. What you mean? I, I've I've not seen. Oh, maybe it's because I'm in. The, I live in the UK, but I even got a a, a button on my StockX or, or anything. I like just that. told you this ain't nothing new. This is something StockX just start doing. Goat been doing this yeah. for years. No, 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 no. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah, may yeah. not have seen it on StockX, but had if you go on Goat and try to sell, you can do it. I'm telling you, when I make sales, when I make sales online, I sell on Goat. I don't sell on StockX because I don't rock with StockX. Okay. I don't rock with goat either, fine. but I like goat better than I like stock eggs. <laughs> and, and 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 that's fine. But this is this is why I'm, this is why I'm very cynical. Is there, there's no place I I haven't seen anybody cynical about what? Cynical about what? Cynical about what? Um, Look, look, okay, cool. Like, you, I've, I've seen your perspective and I, I understand your perspective. Wholeheartedly understand, obviously, the, the market's fluctuating. Um, and obviously, sneakers are going to go down. Most of the Jordan ones are, are actually trending down and they're going to sell, which is lower than the value of what we, what they're supposed to be. But when, when you, when you're StockX and you're probably the leading uh, holder of actual valuation of sneakers, because everybody checks your site and you've been doing, we've been doing it for ages now. So if you start saying, we're going to pre-verify items where can as person that's actually got stock send the items to be pre-verified and as a consignment because i don't think there is at the moment unless i catch you i might have to do more investigation with but there isn't at the moment so if that's the case then all right then it means StockX is buying up pairs to pre-verify to leave or because that's the only way they can actually get pairs or for pre-verification so, so if it's that's not the case, them it's the people that have the sneakers that want to sell the sneakers stop giving StockX that power bro you don't understand why this is why people run to stock x and and base stuff on off of stock x that's a problem yeah stop I know giving problem. them the power to do that but but to my you, question you said bro. cynical you still ain't saying what you're cynical about I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm cynical about the pricing on StockX now. I'm, I'm cynical about the them actually dictating the market price because at the end of the day, if they're pre verifying, I look, 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 I'm, I'm just like, if, no, if I was, I was just gonna say, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, just check, check GOAT, stop yep. checking StockX and check GOAT then, and you'll okay. see, check Flight Club, check uh, Collect, you know, all the resale sites. Outside of eBay, because eBay is is uh, seller control, right? Because the seller yeah, control, control. The price for eBay and like Macari and Poshmark and stuff like that. 
but these yep. these big established platforms like uh, StockX, Goat Flight Club, the market is the market to them. You know what I'm saying? That's where. Yep. I- and the more the more you control the market, the more you influence you have in the market, the more you control the price and narrative. They're not controlling it, nothing, bro. They subject to it. Cause if, um, if if the community says the Cali Five is worth 150 bucks, guess what they're gonna sell it for? 150 bucks. Yep. If the market says the J Balvin threes are worth 400, guess what the price is gonna be on StockX and GOAT and Flight Club? It's gonna be 400. Demand supply, supply and demand, bro. We do that. They don't do that. I I know I know they do that. But then if it's, it could be four hundred now, it could shoot up to five fifty tomorrow or or in a week's time when when the pairs that are that are gone for the low low is potentially could be picked up by um by these companies bro, and pre verified and left there. None bro. of these companies, but it's still going to be based on the market. If the price goes down, if the value goes down, the value, the sellers have to then adjust. It's the set. You never have you go. Have I gone to any resale platform trying to sell something and they told me what to sell it for? The shoe can be worth a hundred dollars. You can you could try to sell it for ten thousand if you want to. It could be yeah. worth ten thousand and you can sell it for one dollar and they gonna let it fly because it's on you. Yep. It's not on them. You know what I'm saying? They, the opportunists, the reseller, and we've been going way too long on this. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it turned to, to me, it's not about StockX. They not doing nothing new. This this pre, pre-approved thing, pre-verified thing, I've been seeing it on GOAT forever, bro. That's all, that's that's the main point. So, that I, that I was trying to make, like, Take stock eggs out of it. Stop giving. That's why I keep saying stop giving them the power. Like I, I, I think, they're the authority I, on on val- sneaker value. I won't give them that, bro. I refuse. They, 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 they're more than that now. Uh, they, they, from from them doing this, they're more than that because uh, this is why this is why I say it's a bit naive to kind of take StockX out of it because at the end of the day, there's a big company that had massive losses recently, and if like they do to control you know, to to kind of make up for those losses, you can actually do a couple of things to put into place to actually kind of make sure you don't get into that situation. And this could be like like let's let's be really really honest. They went from a verification platform to verify sneakers to kind of like the middleman between reseller and, and buyer so now it's more than that it's, it's definitely more than that if you're, saying, if, you're saying, if you're saying stock has got a warehouse full of sneakers that are pre-verified it's more than that it's still a middleman and they and they, still, they still don't control anymore. Anymore. they don't Not they anymore. never have they never have, and they never will control the market. They, they, they now, they now are online reseller. They're not. They, they, they're more than they're just more than a verification site. They, they're, they're literally a beauty. When you okay, when you go in there and cash out, so you saying they fabricating sales? I'm not saying that. I'm I'm not I'm not saying they're fabricating sales. What you're saying. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if I was to put my J Balvin Jordan Freeze for a low price, I'll guarantee it'll be StockX picking up that price. So they're fabricating sales. That's what you're saying. Hold on now. You're not finna do this. You're not finna do this. You're not finna say all that and, and deny this allegation that you, that's what you're really saying. If you're gonna make the allegation, it. make it clear now. I'm saying you're it, saying, no, you're saying, if you put, yeah, it, I'm if you put your J Balvins that you just got, on StockX for a hundred dollars. StockX is gonna buy them before somebody that's trying to get that shoe will. I I I, I pretty I I have hundred percent confidence and, in that. And they're gonna and and they're gonna call it pre authenticated and sell it for market value. So you that's a false sale. And and this is that. why I'm dubious. You're and this not, is why. They don't advertise that. Say that, bro. Make it. So, 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 so we done had we done had this whole big long thing around the fact that you feel like StockX is doing dirty business. You could have said bro, that ten minutes ago. I, I know, but I, I was trying to explain the, the the narrative, and this is why I'm trying to. I'm making you understand. 
You that's come on, bro. They hold they got real estate in your head, bro. No, no, I, I'm I'm just saying that bro, they haven't got re- I don't think about StockX at all. I'm just I'm just pointing out what I actually think about this moment in time. And I totally for, I will totally forget it. I wasn't thinking about this before the podcast. I won't be thinking about this after the podcast. But to be honest, and there's no way on StockX, unless somebody shows me there's no way on StockX where you can actually go and send your sneakers for consignment. Therefore, anything pre-verified means pre-verified means it's, they've hold it and would it to, for them to actually look for it and send it within three days, that means they've got a backlog of stock in their warehouses to sell this. So where is that stock coming from? Because it's not us selling it. It's what them selling it. What you think consignment means? Yeah, but wait, okay, tell, tell, me on, tell me on StockX at this moment in time where I can send my sneakers for consignment for them to hold it. That's what they just saying. They rolling out. You could do it on GOAT. You've been able to do it on GOAT. It's called storage on GOAT. You can send your shoes to storage. They'll authenticate them and hold them for when somebody want to buy them. This ain't nothing new, bro. It's the same thing that the local resale shops do when you take your shoe there and you tell them how much you want for it. Like you done done told stories on the podcast about people's consignment prices being way too high. You can do that on StockX too. You can set your shoe at $600 even though it's only worth two. And ain't nobody going to buy it because that's your price and you ain't going to give it up for less than your price. You can do that on StockX. You can do that uh, on so- uh, I understand. I understand. That's fine. Like so, I, I on on that note, we're gonna put a pin on it because I'll need to do more re- uh, more reading about this because it doesn't say on on the on this actual express shipping whether you can kind of go and send your sneakers in for express shipping and they pre verify. I I need to kind of work that out because at this moment I'm very very dubious about what they're doing. Hundred percent. Like I, I have my reservations. Um. Yeah, so like, <laughs> yeah, do say it, bro. Just say it. Yeah, I've got my, I've got my business. Well, if 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 it's like I hope it, I think it's not. Then they are doing dirty business. That's what you gotta say. And, and simple as that, bro. I roll with I roll with you on whatever notion, bro. Like, but yeah, I feel I just, I just feel like people give these platforms too much power, bro. It's not it's not them. It's us. They feed off of us. I know, you know, I know they feed off of us. I definitely understand the defeat of, of 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 us as sneakers. You know, um, but people, go, people that go to the platforms and type in them numbers, that's where the market comes from. It's actual people, the people that's selling the products. It's always where the value is going to be, bro. And the demand, the supply and demand, yeah. the people that really dig into it and understand, you know, the flow, like, we know we know how the, the market flows, you know what I'm saying? We, we make predictions and stuff like that, and we understand um, or not when some values get to a certain point, bro. Like we, man, we, we've been going back and forth all year long about Jordan ones, how people disrespecting Jordan ones and, and um, how to value on certain stuff. Like the, the union one, we feel like that should be a $500 shoe, but it's not. Yeah. No, no, no. So, it's, but you, you never know what the market is. But my 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 thoughts is never never trust anybody, especially big companies. That's what my my thoughts. No, no, hell no. I ain't, I ain't never saying that. No, I ain't saying that. No, but but <laughs> but we with this with this, I'm I'm taking it as at face value because it ain't nothing I ain't already seen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to for the new, for anybody listening, for the new listeners, uh, for anybody that's probably not savvy. This is why I kind of break it down the way I do, just kind of just detail what my thought process is to come to the conclusions I do. Um, but, but that's because just I'm trying to gift you the opportunity to look into my complex mind. That's the, unfortunately sometimes it kind of gets to this point. <laughs> I was just trying to get to the summary, bro, because when you said it was that one word that you said. And I'm like, Genius. oh, like what? No, you said you was. Um, ah, anyway. Moving on to the next question, bro. So, you know, we all know a shoe surgeon, right? Yeah, we know a shoe surgeon. Do you know shoe cutters? No, I don't know shoe cutters. So right now we're looking at a bread Jordan 1 high OG. This is a custom one-of-one handmade 
pair. It looks okay. spectacular. It looked like 1985. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Handmade shoe cutters. Roger Hung, I think is the guy's name. Hung or Hung. Bro, I ain't, I ain't. The shoe surgeon got, uh, shoe surgeon got problems. <laughs> Why, why, why do you feel like he's got problems? Look at these sneakers, bro. They're dope. They're actually really, really dope. They look absolutely awesome. This is what well, a cactus. Uh, Travis Scott. Uh, like uh, a, a custom. Looks, Travis, yeah. yeah, custom uh, Travis Scott, Jordan 1 Low OG. All, all brown. All brown leather. Two different shades of dark brown and medium like brown embroidery on the back gold embroidery leather tongue tag leather tongue leather guts all that stuff oh my god hold on, hold on. i don't I'm, i don't think shoe says he's got a problem bro i i'm just reveling in the fact that we've got more people doing um, awesome customizations hold on <laughs> hey. I, I, reverse mocha Handmade suede white and caramel suede with a zoom comfort outsole. Outsole. <laughs> <laughs> zoom outsole, bro. Are you serious? Hold on, hold on, if hold you- on, hold on. <laughs> 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 You're reveling in this one, bro. Yo, this is Jordan One High Orange Candy, brother. It looks like a all white electro orange. Kind yeah, of, yeah. But it's patent leather orange instead of it's metallic orange patent leather. I'm sorry. The wing, look at the wings logo, bro. So clean. Yeah, so clean. Black so. snake skin collar and swoosh, orange stitching on the black. Look at the back. How did he do it? I don't even know what that logo that is. is. What is this? Apollo, <laughs> Apollo Group. So he did this for a corporation. He made this sneaker for a corporation. I guess, I'm guessing this is a display piece. Ain't nobody. Black laces. Look at the, t- oh my God, bro. Look at the tongue. 17, whatever 17 is. The t- Anyway, one more, bro. And you got, awesome. you got to go with me. You got to go with me right here. Jordan go 1 on. High OG Off White Union NYC to ATL. That's a mouthful, bro. <laughs> it's a shoe for it, too. Bruh. NYGA instead. Hawks logo on the tongue, off white swoosh, suede elephant print, bread, uh, uh, smoke gray. Half a half homage to home style. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a lot, bro. That's a lot. That's a lot going off on. That's a lot going off in one sneaker, bro. Sway up under the leather on on the wings. Rookie of the year vibes on it as well, bro. Bloody yo, now that's crazy. Yo, yo. Are you only thing that's missing on that is a, is a reverse switch for the Travis Scott. Then you got all the collaborations covered on that one, bro. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. I ain't even. Dog, I'm I'm. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, the, the original no. question you put forward was a shoe surgeon's got problems, right? I don't think he has, though, bro. Uh, I I think it's it's a good thing that we've got more and more people come on, come along and kind of do customs and like like so, as a shoe surgeons has been a pioneer for for a lot of people in terms of doing like um, sneakers from like fresh. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think I think it's the celebration of of customizers for this for this to happen. Cause it's all—it's just awesomeness, bro. One hundred percent. You're right. 
Yeah, right. so I, I don't think shoe surgery has got a problem. I think I, I think it's a if it's a um, it's like a almost like a uh, what do you call it? So like a shout out to yeah, our mutual respect. This is this is, and no. to be honest, I, we don't know we don't know who no. his influences are, shoe cutters' influences are. No, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure he popping this shoe surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he like, yeah, shoe surgical see these these uh South Beach Travis Scott Air Force War highs. He gonna see them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah bro, cause is it is it not dope, right? We the people gonna say it's dope. It's dope. South Beach Jordan one high Travis Scott. Yeah, yeah, it's dope. It's, it's fire. Dope. It's fire, right? Okay. As a customizer, you want great customer. As a hooper, you want great hoopers to say you, your game is is dope. As a yeah. rapper, you want great rappers to say he be spit. So, as a customizer, you want the other great customizers to acknowledge your work. To say yeah, he probably exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be if I was a customizer, full time customizer at this level. I'm popping. I, I want it. I want a shoe surgeon. I want a mosh. I want all. I want Vic Almighty. I want everybody. You are gonna say my name on your video? You gonna want to collab? We are gonna do a collab video? Come yeah, on, that, I'm, that's, popping. I'm popping that. Yeah, let's, let's let's be honest. Summer Sue Surgeon sneakers are dope, but I'm talking the materials oh, and oh, the, oh, if not oh, yeah, all, like, of them. Yeah, I might not like them. But yeah, he doing. He putting in material quality. No material quality. It's out of this world, like in terms of what he, what materials you use. Some of the exotic cuts he uses for his sneakers are dope. So, so like, all you can do is it's just, it's just a continuation of excellence for for people to keep coming up through and doing that. I I enjoy stuff like that. I enjoy looking at people's concepts and ideas. It's it's fascinating to me of what could be and what yeah and what could be. See that that's the that's the that's a triple black Jordan <laughs> one high. Hit the streets, you know. <laughs> off white, I mean, uh, shadow, off black, I mean, again. shadow ten, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, ten. all of that, all of that, bro. <laughs> Rock, Rolling Stones, <laughs> Death Stroke, Death Stroke, bro, 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 you know bro. the DC character, Batman villain, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jordan one high off white. Oh my god, shoe surgeon. Right. That. That's all I'm saying. All right, cool. Now, now it's time. You know, I like I love right. I like shoe surgeon too, but yeah. Now, bro, <laughs> let's let's wipe the let's wipe the dribble off our lips and move on to the next quick strike, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> you know, you know, you would be dribbling. Our next up is this one, bro. I want to know: is this uh, general purpose sneaker cancelled or not cancelled? Because we're hearing news it could be coming back. That's right. But I well, will it have Tom Sachs? Who knows? Will will the situation with Tom Sachs be resolved before this? Who knows? Uh, I just I just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention that uh, General Purpose Sneaker may be continuing its release, um, but it would be quite quite interesting to see what happens with the situation with Tom Sachs with this. I don't I I would I like to think that Nike would. I wouldn't put it past them to sell it without his name. Yeah. I, I think also, that might be the situation. I also wouldn't put it past them to just slide him back in. They slid Travis back in. So Yeah, yeah. You never know. You never know. All right. That, that's just 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 for anybody that wants that a general purpose sticker. It doesn't look like we're gonna get a variation soon. Uh, it'll be quite interesting to see um how they release it. You remember that? you remember the Rui Hachimura Jordan one low? Yeah, bro. You gonna remember this Jordan One Low Year Dragon? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that looks dope! That looks dope! That looks dope! Zion, uh, Voodoo, uh, Rui, Jordan One Low, meet your new brother, <laughs> <laughs> the Jordan One Low. Yeah, the dragon, Chinese New Year. Yo, that, yo, bro, 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 bro. The, the green leather has got dragon scales on this. And this is one, the, the LeBron sneaker that's got dragon scales in, I think it's LeBron 15. I love that sneaker because it's, it's got the way it's got a wavy dragon scale all over it. I love it. That's another sneaker that looks like 
this like a dragon based sneaker absolutely dope the scales on that oh and they've got the actual red envelopes you you know what those red, red envelopes are about aren't they yeah a little bit a little bit yeah so, so they've got red envelopes yeah so so the red envelopes it is is all based on the Chinese uh, dragon bro absolutely dope yeah clear out so probably got something on the bottom we ain't, we ain't seeing that yet though yeah. It's, it's, I thought I thought it was gonna be the Chinese New Year, New Year Year of the Dragon, right? Cool, yeah, 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 got it. it it's it's a it's a dope release. Everybody's gonna be on this. Everybody's gonna be on this like they were for the Zion one. Yeah, they, Zion they, one. they out. They gone. They yeah. gone. You know what? I, you know what? I like what one thing I do like. Uh, didn't we get like a Chinese uh, Jordan One Low Chinese New Year as well? Year the Rabbit. Yes. Yes. We was, it was, it was it twenty five hundred pairs? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We had that. Then we had the. I think the year of the rabbit, and I think that came out, but that came out really limited as well. Yeah, we dunks. We it was a. It was a air. A couple pair of Air Max too. Yeah, 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 as well. And then we got the Zion. I ain't seen or heard nothing about none of them shoes, bro. No, they were. They I wanted, just, I wanted the twenty threes. I wanted the twenty threes. And uh, Rico Red told Rico Red said he had a plug. He he got a, a plug in Manila, bro. And he got the shoe for retail because they were sitting over there. He got it for retail. He got it shipped over here. And he, he, he had two pairs. And we went the same size. He's the same size as us, bro. He sold one of them to uh, somebody else. He said he had them for a while, but he sold them to somebody. I, I never no. knew. What, what sells over here don't sell over there. Trust me, sometimes no. that's the situation, bro. He, he had two pairs and he sat on one of them for a while and he eventually got rid of it. I would have had I would have had it for retail, bro. Sheesh. And but I know yeah, but, I ain't know until we we talked that sneaker con. I'm like, bro. Uh, Man. It's amazing that I mean, it's amazing that they are actually producing some really good Jordan One Lows like Zion's. They actually got this Rui Jordan One Low is Year the Dragon is crazy, bro. Crazy. Talk about talking about one production. Never forget. Don't sleep on Cool Kai. Okay. Yeah. Bro. Kai playing. Uh, can, can I can I can I tell can I say I, I know where that inspiration came from? Say it. The Adidas Forum highs. Remember a couple of years back they did these um almost like these wax jewel like forum highs with the same colours? No. Vaguely. Vaguely. Yeah. Yep. However, uh you remember the pastel Jordan ones? The women's ones? Yep, yep. yep. I remember those two. Um, remember when people was uh, dip dying? I still want. That's why I wish I had two pair of Union ones because I would dip dye one of them to end up looking like this. That was the <laughs> idea I had for the Union ones. I ain't even research uh, Union one customs too. I got to start looking for that now. It's been long enough. But uh, and yeah, bro, and then, bro, 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 bro. I'm gonna show Try you now. Not. I'm gonna show you what I meant. I want to see a tie dye, but I'm I'm going to show you what I meant, bro. Um, bro right this, this moment, yeah, 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 yeah. I see, I see. That, that's what I mean, bro. That's different. I know it's different, but there's I, I, I there's very subtle differences between them between them. But like, you can't tell me that's that's not where some of the inspiration came from. Possibly, God did it better. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not. De- I'm not denying that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No, no, no. De- I ain't. No, nah, yeah. I ain't arguing. I ain't arguing. I'm just saying. He. I think Kai did it better. I don't like the. Uh, yeah. You know what this is, though. See, you you saying Kai got this from Adidas, right? When did Adidas do this? Yeah. This was a couple of years back. Jeremy Scott. Jeremy Scott. Yeah. Uh, you ever heard of a Jordan One pack called Gatorade? Yeah, I know the Great Red Pack. Yeah, that was before the Adidas did that. So there yeah, you go. Inspiration, is, inspiration comes from everywhere, bro. But it's 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 really good to see. It's really really good to see. But yeah, Kai did it better, definitely. I think it's more. Uh, I think it's more akin to um, the, the customizers uh, dip dyeing white Air Force ones. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I, yeah. so bro, 
Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right quick, right quick. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, I went done with Kai. Because you think he playing. He's not playing. Y'all think, Kai, y'all oh. think, y'all think Kai playing. Ninja Turtle, Jordan 1s. Air Kai's. <laughs> oh, I mean, Air Kai, sorry. Yeah, Ninja Turtles, all four. Raphael, Donatan, Donatello, Leonardo, and Michelangelo. Michelangelo. What one's your best one, bro? Uh, I think I like the Donatello. Donatello was always my favorite turtle on the low because he was always the smart one. Yeah, I, 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 I rarely like got in, rarely got in trouble by himself. Raph always get in trouble by himself. Mike always get in trouble by himself. Raph and Leo always arguing with each other because Leo was too uh, hard headed and he always wanted to be the leader. So he wanted to boss Raph around, even though Raph was a free spirit and he just loved to fight. Like Raph was always down for the game. You know what I mean? He wanted the brothers like Raph, you ain't doing nothing without Raph being involved. Raph will be the first one to pop yeah. off. Let, let him look crazy, bro. I'm going to stab him. I'm telling you, soon he look crazy. I'm on him, bro. And Leo be like, nah, Ralph, you got to chill. You got to chill. Sometimes we can, nah, bro, nah. We finna, I'm going to poke him in the neck, bro. Soon he, soon he look stupid at me. I'm telling you, bro. I'm on him. I'm on him. You know what I'm saying? Ralph was outside, too. You know, Ralph was outside doing his vigilante thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, Donatello, Donatello was always chill. He was always up to some creative. You know what I'm saying? So I related to Donatello a lot. Like he was the one always breaking it up, breaking up the fights. He was the one always, you know, talking sense to to the rest of the game. So yeah, yeah. my my favorite was Raphael. Raphael, he fired up, bro. Yeah, my, my favorite, my my favorite one is Raphael. I like I liked I liked his weapons that he used as well. Absolutely nice. dope. Yeah. Raphael, <laughs> yeah. Fired up, bro. Next week's right. Give us the information about the mystery box. Um, the situation with uh, it's got, you said it's got a release date, and give us a give us a bit of a background on it. What you talking about? The mystery box. Mystery box. Yeah, or was it mischief box? One or two. No, the mystery box, bro. We already talked about it. Oh, I don't know why I've got mischief. Oh, okay, that's my bad. Mystery box, mischief free box. That was confusing. I, I think I was I misheard you. Then, All right? Then, um, let's talk about the CEO, bro. Let's talk about the um, the added CEO saying that Kanye West is not a bad person. What's your thoughts on that, bro? That don't surprise me. Um. I feel like that was kind of the general consensus about the whole situation. Like it, it wasn't good for them to part ways with him. They didn't want to. Do you even have a listen? Shall we ever listen to what he actually said? I guess. I can't. Well, I don't think we can hear it. But he basically, it says he's um, Bjorn Golden. Basically, says that the banner to split with Kanye West. I don't think he meant to to say what he said, but I don't think he was a bad person. So I think um, I think that's what he said. I think it's some some kind of retrospective to indication to that he was saying um, they had to split because of the circumstance of what he said. But I don't feel like he meant what he said. But he was just in the occasion he got heated, possibly got riled up, and he said it without meaning what he said. I don't think he understood. What what he meant to say and maybe just giving them a bit of a relief to say well okay cool I know Kanye said what he said but he's really not a bad person in, in general but that's what I get from he's come, that's, that's what I get from it whatever bro I mean it don't it don't matter you know and this ain't the type of podcast where I can say what I really mean so yeah alright cool <laughs> <laughs> deep, deep underlying, um, it, well, some stuff you can't say on here. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do a different kind of show. I'm gonna give me a Patreon. I'm gonna do a different kind of show, bro. <laughs> I can't. I really, I can't say what I want to. What I really want to say about this. So we can just move on. Okay, but you had something uh, on Fair of God as well, there, bro. Yeah, uh, staying on ideas real quick. Um, Fear God, Jerry got these eighty uh, fours. No, was it eighty eighty four or eighty six? Yep. Eighty six 
forums. Fear of God with the fear of God outsole. They look how you would expect a fear of God forum to look. I ain't mad at him. Um, because when I see him wearing his stuff, he always makes it look good to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I don't really, I don't really vibe with his stuff too tough. But when, when you see him wearing it, it's understandable. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you see him and his, his wife moving around, and she got on the white pair of the, uh, the 86s. He got on the pair of the basketballs that we saw um, that, that people were calling samples, the ones with the stripes on the toe. He his yeah. got stripes on the toe. So, um, and they've they been moving, bro. Um, I didn't know how much stuff he was doing with Y3. Yeah. I thought he was, um, I thought he was just chilling on, on his stuff, putting his stuff together behind the scenes. But um, apparently he's been doing a lot of work with Y3. He then dropped uh, a bunch of silhouettes with Y3, two, three, four silhouettes with Y3. Um, the, the sneaker culture ain't really tuned in to the Y3 movement. So, you know, it's kind of... Not for a long time. Not for a long time. When yeah. First, originally, yeah, yeah. He got NMDs. He got Y3 NMDs and stuff like that. Not NMDs. Um, Ultra Boost. Yeah, fear is a pair of fear of God ultra boots that um he been wearing and stuff like that. So it looked like the fear of God stuff is on the way. Finally, I think it finally it looks clean. I'm gonna be honest. It looks clean. It's very it's very Adidas if I'm honest, and like infused with fear of God, uh, and it looks clean, very clean. I I, I kind of think it's a lot of people could could pull that off. Yeah, like I said when I when I see him and his wife, you know. They they make it look how it's supposed to look. So shout out to yeah, Jerry. Yeah, yeah. It's very, it's very, it's very, yeah, shout out to Jerry. It's very high and fashion, kind of clean, clean chic. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's good. It's it goes with what uh, where Jerry wants to do with Fear of God, uh, the, the whole image for Fear of God. Very essentials based. Very like, yeah, you can fit this with essentials. You can fit this with clean, high end fashion. You can go to to basketball games. You can go to uh, more any arena and still be like clean, like proper clean. It's not. It's it's kind of stepping away from the sporting angle and more of the high end uh, Adidas angle. And I think I think that's what Jerry brings to, to the table for Adidas. Facts, and 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 also I think uh, on top of that, it helps when Adidas is doing collaborations with Gucci and all of that stuff and Prada, because it kind of levels like in terms of uh, public's um, public point of view, Adidas is doing a lot with high end fashion, high end brands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that. Yeah, it's good. I like it. Um, I, obviously, if you're an Adidas fan, you probably love it. If you're a Jordan fan, you're probably gonna think, nah, that's that's, that's not for me. But obviously, it's a, everything's not for everybody. And I think in this situation, you just got you go, you got to celebrate. Just excellence, to be honest. It's nice. I like it. Definitely like it. Yeah, but bro, you know what time it is now? Because it's main subject time, bro. Unless you haven't got any more quick strikes, that is. No. Nah. No, so um, Mikey this week announced the launch potential launch, and I know what you said to me the other day. It was an accident. It was a it was a test, but Nike recently announced the um, the launch of their what, what since two thousand twenty one, which which was what rumors have actually dictated the restoration, which which they're undertaking in the states, and that was all it's all local based, Nike town based, and all of that stuff, or Nike uh, hard store based, where you have to go and go into the store and actually can't kind of find these deals. But now they're launching their um, restoration website, mm-hmm. and with and with that, we saw a sneak leak of some of the prices. Which were fifty percent on the retail prices. Apparently, it, could, it was a test site, a test sample. The prices were what they were. It could have been a test price, but I don't see Nike restoring sneakers to sell for retail or above. Am I correct? No, nah, they can't. Ain't no way they yeah. could. They could do that and get away with it, like because of the, the 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 return sneakers that um you get at the the factory stores, you know, the back wall, the, the, the famous, I was about to say infamous, 
it, it, it I guess it depends on the story you're in at, at the time that you're there, whether yeah, you want to call it famous or infamous. It depends <laughs> if, you're in, if you're at Oregon and you're a staff discount and you actually work for Oregon. <laughs> if, you, if you're in Oregon, Tennessee, um, probably Chicago. They got, new, so. they got a new factory in Alabama, Chicago. Um, they got a new factory in Alabama. I'm I'm interested in seeing what's going to develop for that city that they got the new factory in. But because yeah. uh, it's a small town in the middle of nowhere type situation, and I believe they did that on purpose because of what's been happening in Memphis. They had to get a different shipping hub. I don't know if we talked about that, but no, since about that. since the beginning of the year, a lot of my Nike online purchases have been shipped from Alabama. Okay. So and Memphis I, probably um, I Googled the address and it's a factory. Google at the time wasn't um even updated. Yep. On on the location. They had it on the map. It was there on the map. Like you can you can Google it and see the the, the physical address and, and all that. But you know when you click on to see images it was a, a empty field and the beginning of the construction of this uh, shipping hub that they got. Like you could okay. see, um, you know, that it, they were starting to build something there. And when you do the 360 view and spin it around, ain't nothing else around, bro. No other businesses, no houses, no nothing. It's just a, a, a two lane road and nothing else around. <laughs> All right, so so I'm expecting military barracks. I'm expecting ID checks. I'm expecting all the all the tobacco. No, Area 52 for Nike, bro. It's in the middle. <laughs> it's in the middle of nowhere. So you ain't got no other reason to be there Area than to be going Nike, over there. Bro. Area ain't no, 50 Nike. <laughs> ain't nowhere to hide. Ain't nowhere to duck off at. Ain't nowhere to try to look inconspicuous. You ain't got no other reason to be over here. If you're not coming this inside this building. You have no reason to stop here. <laughs> Yo, bro, and there's literally there's literally Area 50 Nike where you have to have a pass to get in uh, and literally make sure you're, you're, you're going to have barracks there. You're going to have a whole Nike army there. You're going to make sure that mm-hmm. nobody comes in and out. Nobody's going to steal from it. Only delivery vans come in it and all the delivery vans have got actual, actual special IDs to get in it and fingerprints and eye, eye scans and all of that stuff. Yo, bro, right. that's a military base, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Only, only, nobody's stealing nothing from here, bro. Only, only official Nike employees like me can get in there. <laughs> QX for Nike. <laughs> there you have it. Exclusive. The plug. Q is the flag now. <laughs> Come on, bro. You know I'm unofficially, officially. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but uh, you know, Area 50 Nike, that's the one. Um, yeah, I know already, bro. <laughs> That's the one we got. I got something for that too. Um, so, so the whole move towards being able to do the back wall online, yeah, the whole much. refurbishment program. Remember, we saw the the uh, the cool gray elevens, right? The one guy had a pair of cool gray elevens, so he got them off the back wall at a Nike store. It's only fifteen stores in the U.S. only that are having to refurbish shoes. So if you're lucky okay. enough to live around, you know, one of them stores and get one of them pairs, great, right? He, he said he paid, what, 125 or 154 or something like that. That's a, a $225 release after tax, at least 240 is what you're going to yep. be paying. So he paid almost 50% off, if not 50% off, somewhere in that range. So yep, they've yep. been doing it. Um, we was hoping as sneakerheads, I'm pretty sure you and me both, if we weren't even interested, we were hopeful for other people, other sneakerheads that are interested, they're going to be able to get their hands on some of this stuff. Yeah. You know the resale aspect is going to come in and muck it up. 
We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Let's just talk about the the sneakers at the moment, the releases. Well, what I'm what I'm doing as we speak at the moment, I'm actually trying to work out what the actual resale and the VNDS pair of those Jordan Eleven Cool Grays are because that that's the ret- that's a retrospect, and uh, the only way to find out is if you go into go. So, uh, how much does a, a VNDS pair of um, Jordan Eleven um, Cool Grays go for? And is the pair from Nike almost brand new? So what level is it? Is that 5 out of 10, 7 out of 10, 9 out of 10? That, 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 that pair of cool grades that do had uh, on that reel look like a 9.5 or 10 to me. They look brand new. Okay, so they, they restore it almost brand new and then literally give it to you for half the price. Pretty much. But, but, but. This is this is this is a real thing. Let me explain to y'all something. Yeah. As a sneakerhead, sometimes I just I just open apps and just do stuff for just for I'm laying in the bed, you know, on my way to sleep or whatever, and I'm just on Nike. I'm on Nike ID. I'm making customs that I'm not gonna buy. Uh, I mean, uh, remember the one time. Remember the one time I went down a rabbit hole on tennis uh, court sneakers, and yeah. I saw all these these dope looking court sneakers. They look like Kobe's and this and that, and you know I'm trying to see if I can do them on Nike ID and all. How much? And they selling out and all. So I'm going. I'm looking all over the place. I got the the terror scores right. And I've I've chatted like I've tried to get research from um, Nike about certain stuff on the app, right? I go to to the chat with the experts, and I just be talking to these Nike people sometimes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> so the Terra Squads, it was a little um, a little delivery situation with the Terra Squad ones, Air Force ones. So I go to the chat with the experts, right? I just want to let them know. FedEx over here fumbling the bag. So before my delivery, you know, end up not coming or whatever the case is, I just want y'all to know, because it was out for delivery for two days. Normally when something's out for delivery, you're going to get it that day, right? But it was out for delivery for two days before it actually came. So, you know, I hit okay. Nike, let them know, hey, you know, something going on on package, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So I'm chatting, I'm chatting. The package ended up showing up while I was on the chat. Yep. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know, is it here? I appreciate it. Whatever. As the uh, expert Nike correspondent ends the chat, this is what they tell me. Before we close this conversation, tap the link below, share Blah, 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 right? Hit us up anytime if you have an order concern. Always here to help and sort style, size, blah, 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 blah. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, yeah. All this uh, obligatory stuff, right? Damn it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to show you. I got I got to open the chat back up right now because I, I let my phone close. My, I'm going to show you exactly what this Nike expert told me on screen. Zoom in on that. Always remember we, we have an amazing 60-day return policy in which you can actually wear the product and return them, no questions asked. <laughs> Okay. I knew that I knew that existed. I knew that existed. I didn't know. Now you confirmed it, it does exist. <laughs> wow. This, this was Friday? Okay. Was Friday, yeah. They pushing it. Wear that shoe for a month and a half and send it back. Please. Yeah, we still yeah, we'll, 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 we'
we got promoted. We got promoted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're going to sell it again. You better wear it, though. You got to wear it first, though. <laughs> I wonder how many people that's that, that's like the old age old age old thing that uh, some people do to be kind of savvy some something like it's it's probably yeah. not the best thing to do ever is to wear stuff and then kind of take it back to the store once stay on, like stay on, trend. you stay on trend like that yeah. the the, yeah. the, sneakerheads, the type of sneakerheads that buy the shoe and wear it the same day and wear it all week and then when the next one come out they're going to buy that one and wear that one and you know the old stuff don't matter to them. Un- the sneakerheads that are unlike us, where they they only care about. I mean, if you want to call them sneakerheads, I don't, I don't necessarily call them sneakerheads. They just uh, trendy people. Yeah, you know they just they just like to stay fresh, which is fine. You know it, it ain't a knock. Um, but the people that they just want the new Jordans, they don't they don't know the nickname, they don't know the story, they don't know the none of that. Yeah. They just want the new Jordans. Those type of people, they going they gonna be supplying. Hopefully, I think that's what Nike going for for those type of people to supply this refurbishment program. And yeah, but the, the Nike has to the web, Nike the gonna give them the money back, though. Huh? Nike's gonna give them the money back for the sneaker, though. That's the thing. It doesn't really yeah. kind of make it. Yeah, but it doesn't make it really cost effect, like effective for them, really, does it? I don't know, bro. I mean. It's, to be honest, they're losing out on a retail sale, retail sale, and, and giving it for for fifty percent the discount. Because if you really think about it, like if I buy a pair, if I buy a pair of Jordans for two hundred pounds, and then I wear them for 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 forty five days, and I send them back, yeah. and then and then like literally they have to pay me back the two hundred pounds that I spent, and then I actually have to try and sell that for hundred pounds. I, I can understand what you're getting at, but they're losing money if if, they, if that's the case. That's good will towards men. <laughs> right, but 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 um would you say uh that jordan 11 cool gray went for or from nike from the actual refurbishment store say that again um what was the price that it, um it, was it um one of the bros bought, picked up the actual cool gray for 11s from from the i think dude said 150 man I think he said one one twenty one twenty five or one fifty something like that. So, so let's let's delve into that actual other other bad side to this, which we were kind of contemplating, is is the actual VNDS market. So basically, I you could at this moment in time go. I think the nine point five VNDS pairs are going for like anywhere between two thirty to two fifty and above. So from that perspective, he could have bought it for one hundred fifty. And put it on uh, goat for like two hundred fifty. Well, okay, it's two sides. That's to this. the problem. That's the problem now, bro. That's the it's problem. Two now. It's two sides to this. And uh, explain to us because I know you get ex- thinking exactly what I'm thinking. Go, on, bro. Those people Nike want to the VNDS sellers, the eBayers. The, the the people on Poshmark and Macari and Grailed and, and all the the peer-to-peer um yep. aftermarket sites, not the StockX and Golden Flight Club. But even though they do use two, it's not at the level of a uh eBay. You know what I'm saying? Nike want those people too. They want the eBay people too. Like they they want the people that's the people that's gonna wear them a few times and get rid of them. That's yep. the, Wherever and, they're coming from, they want that. That's one side. Yep. That's one side. Easy sell, though. It's an easy sell for them because people pick it up. It is. The other side is, are they really trying to uh, shortstop the resale market? That's what they've been saying they wanted to do. I know, but the, but the only way they can do that, now, there's there's conditions to this. The only way they can ever do this is if there's a massive influx of sneakers that come to them. So like in 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 if it's like one Mars Yard or one like absolute like Chicago one that comes in and they restore uh, from 2015 and they restore that and pay, pay back. I think they're looking for the, the sneakers that nobody else wears after the 60 day expiry date. So basically, it's another resale. It's another it's another it's another sell for them. So they've sold you a sneaker for 200 200 pounds or uh, 170, 145, 135 whenever you brought it, whatever time period you bought it because obviously sneakers price 
price has gone up and they're expecting you to wear that and now you're feeling oh this this is a bit gone out it doesn't look nice uh, i think i think this is i was going to throw this out and then you give it to nike instead and they restore it and sell it again that's that's they sold the sneaker twice to the public so that's what they're looking for i think to kind of accelerate more um generate more sales is in terms of refurbishing from themselves to, to get into that market but then um obviously they know it's going to be an easy sell bro because people that are, people that actually get that sneaker they realize oh yeah I'm going to buy that and I'm I'm going to wear it or I'm going to sell it on go that's that's the easy sell but the other flip side to this <clears throat> whole conversation is the the fact that um they're doing this and the fact that they're actually kind of maneuvering this way it just go it just goes to show that they know what they're doing in the market for refurbishment and because it's going to be easy sell but on top of that I just I feel they can't short stop the market unless it's a mass handback. So if if like uh, twenty thousand people gave back Mars Yards to Nike to restore and to sell on, I don't think that's ever going to be the case. So they, I can't think they're going to short. I can't think they're going to short stop Goat, who uh, especially Goat, who does V and D pairs, like we verify V and D pairs and sell to you. And that's the market that a lot of people used in terms of V and D and eBay as well. So. But- they are not going to be able to do to the sneakers what Nike can do to the sneakers. Yeah, I know. I know. Me and you could do possibly to the sneaker what Nike could do to the sneaker because we we would be willing to put in that much effort on a VNDS pair. But the average person that's buying aftermarket or uh, used VNDS or not is not um, going to put in that that amount of effort. They're not going to invest mm-hmm. in the tools. They're not going to um, invest their their own time. They sweat equity into bringing a pair back to where Nike would be able to bring a back a pair back to. Let's say that's a question. Let's say you got a twelve year old. I don't know about you. I've been wearing the same size since I was eleven. I've been wearing size eleven since I was eleven. When I was 11, 12, 13 years old, I was outside. I wasn't cleaning my sneakers when I came home. I wish I was. I would I would yeah. still I would have a lot of I would have a lot of classic pairs in, you know what I'm saying, in my collection, had I been uh, savvy enough to take care of my sneakers back then. But the average youngster that's not locked in on the sneaker culture ain't taking care of their sneakers. So Let's say you're a dad like us. You buying your 11, 12, 13 year old son a bunch of retros, and he beating them. You got your collection yeah. too, but he ain't beating your stuff because you buying him his own stuff. He beating his stuff. He beat them and put them down. He go hoop in them. He wear them to school. He wear them outside. He run around with his friends. He beating them, and you gonna keep him laced up. You know what I'm saying? When something dope coming out and he want it, you're going to get it for him. You got you, yeah. Just say you, you get him. You can get him whatever he want. Just, just, just go there with it. And he beating these shoes. And they just came out three weeks ago. you like, bro, I ain't even wore mine yet. Look at what he didn't do to his. <laughs> Who ain't sending them to Nike? Yeah, yeah. I'm sending them. But yeah. that's a rare case. And, and I yeah, think you're right. right. How many people are gonna be really juiced up to, to ship their shoes back to Nike? It's gonna be a lot of people. What Nike is gonna to have to figure out a way to incentivize people to do it and make it make sense for them financially. Because right now, I can't see where it makes sense financially. The only, the only, the only way they're doing this is, um, I, I think. They're not expect. The thing is, you remember, you're giving up a sneaker. You're not getting it back. You're not getting it restored back. You're giving up a sneaker to Nike, who's going to resell, resell the rework of the restoration it done. So that that's fine. We understand that point of view. So you're giving the sneaker up for for, for to Nike because obviously it's beat. Nike's going to do what they're going to do to the sneaker and to restore it back to where it was before and try to sell it again, which is fine. And they're going to give you whatever fifty percent, seventy five percent, whatever it is, depending on the condition of the sneaker. So that's that's all fine. Like I don't think I don't think they can. Unless unless we see a mass influx go into it, and and especially silhouette wise, if we see like five or six size ones of a different sneaker, then that's the only way this gonna kind of detrimentally affect 
Goat or bigger platforms that actually kind of sell VND sneakers, eBay, Goat, uh, every, all the others. That's the only way it, ha- it will happen. So I don't, I don't personally think there's going to be any impact from what Nike's doing in terms of the bigger platforms, like what we just discussed. Because I think there's a lot of people that sell their sneakers on these platforms to maximize their profit. And as a matter of fa- as a matter of fact, I think it's going to be the reverse. These people, and like we said, Nike's relying it, relying on these people to come in and actually buy the sneakers from the website it's going to be super hard to get any pairs of um restored sneakers from nike because people are just going to flood it buy it and put it on gold and that's an easy sell from and i think i think that that's what nike is potentially relying on i don't think it's going to affect the bigger platforms what it's going to affect is a smaller platform. There's a smaller people. Is the restorers that actually will go on eBay and find the beat up sneaker to restore it back to where it was before, and then kind of sell it on. That's where it's going to hit the most because these people aren't going to find these pairs anymore. People are just going to say, you know what, I bought this from Nike. It's beat up. I'm not going to even sell it. You know what, give it to Nike, and that's that could happen a lot more. It's only going to be recent stuff too. It ain't. It ain't going to be yep. like. You know, we'll we'll go back three, four, five, seven, eight years. Sometimes it, that's not going to be what Nike is doing. They could, but they. I think that would be a bigger investment in in a, in that program. Yeah. Not, they're not doing that. They only taking sixty days, sixty day return. Like Nike do two year warranties. Like you can pop an airbook and year and, a half in and 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 get an exchange, or you know, what I mean, get a get a. Get a voucher, you know what I mean. Get a get a. Do Nike buy these pairs off you? That's the question. Do do you give them in, or do you, do Nike buy the the pairs off you? That, we gonna see, but that that website popping up there, and the fact that it, you know we have seen people that actually have access to these fifteen stores, wherever they at, that's doing it. <laughs> the back wall is coming online, bro. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? It's beautiful the way they actually executed it with the Mars Yard sneaker as well. The way, the fact that they actually did a rest- restoration video for this with the Mars Yard sneaker and bringing some of that vibe into it to kind of say, you know what? We restore really, really massive heat here. That that kind of kind of brought it to the limelight like, way more. And you know, some of the pairs we saw, we saw UNC ones that recently came out that was actually 50% discount. So you, you kind of see it's going to be more recent pairs. But every so often there's going to be a, like a unicorn sneaker that comes on there. And yeah, that, that, that you, yeah. Yeah. People, people that's that's the part that we look forward to. People being there yeah. to push them them pairs like it's gonna be some pairs pop up on there it's like people sneakerheads blessing the sneaker community yeah yeah For exactly you know, really... and we know i mean nike gotta get theirs bro and and that's that'll be at that point that'll be nike playing stock x nike playing yeah. no nike playing ebay you know what I'm saying? that's yeah. really is nike playing ebay you know what would be really, really interesting is all of a sudden, if Nike um, come out with, say, imagine they did a full size stock run of like the Dornbecker fives that have been restored. That's when you can see that impact of the actual um, restoration on the market because nobody will, nobody will sit in there will be going, oh, let me go to go and take these VND pairs of these Dawnbaker fives. And when, when all of a sudden, imagine if they do an official, yo, this is even worse. Imagine they do a raffle, official raffle for restored sneakers on, <laughs> and they literally like, like, yeah, like the sneakers app, like they're saying, you know what? We've no, got I don't all- yeah, just do it on the whatever the refurbishment site is. Yeah, on the ref- no, but but just, but but just like sneakers app, the on the refurbishment site, there is this release date for like a full size run of repaired Dawnbecker fives, and I'm you have to put a this. raffle to your bro. That's ridiculous, bro. If they I'm end up doing this. that, just certain yeah. certain sizes. I can see them. I can see them doing raffles for sizes, though. I can see that. Yeah. I could, yeah, like, like they might be uh, say some somebody brings in like a like one one of the one of the OGs of like uh, Chicago lost and found has been restored because yeah. like you know what um yeah, we're gonna we're doing this and there's only like one size ten or one size eleven right and they just say raffle 
I can see him doing a little oh, rap. One for, for one size, bro. Yeah. For a hundred. For a hundred. For a hundred. That's that's that is crazy. I can see. You, you went, know what? Do that. You went if you didn't have lost and found, and they, your size popped up, and they did a little mini raffle, a little draw You're situation going. for You're going in. Yeah, you are going in with the, all the millions of other people that want that sneaker. But the, I, I can see, I can see the yeah. site crashing, bro. I can see yeah. the site crashing. Yeah, that's it's going game. to be pandemonium, bro. They pandemonium. know that's the game, bro. If they, this is just, this is clearly a decision that they made, and they're going forward with it. How successful it is is up in the air, um, but it's Nike, bro. It's in innovation. They preach innovation. They, yeah, they new innovation to the. Uh, they just add a new wrinkle into the way they operate, and it's them. They, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. for, they fighting StockX in court. Why not? Yeah, watch this, watch this StockX. <laughs> <laughs> but the be- the beautiful thing about it is. If you ever wanted to get a sneaker restored, like if you were ever wanted to buy a, a restored sneaker, who would you buy it from, bro? That's the big question. Exactly. You would want to buy it from the manufacturer that actually sold you the sneaker in the first place. So if they're doing restorations, you're like, you, I, I guarantee there's going to be people who go, it, 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 this website's kind of ruined it for them. And then I, I truly believe there's people out there that go to the restoration store to give them the restoration and probably got a plug in the restoration store to say, let me know, let me know when these sneakers are restored. I'm coming back for them. Listen, Imagine the type of tech Nike using to refurbish these sneakers. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah. They can buy all the stuff. They can buy everything. There ain't nothing that <laughs> they want that they can't get to use on this stuff. Bro. They got <laughs> stuff. They done made machines proprietary to Nike that can do things that customizers ain't been able to put together yet. I'm I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take it up a level just slightly just a little bit before we finish on the subject, right? I'm pretty sure, right? I'm gonna use the Mars Yard as an example again because we're using the Mars Yard for this example main topic anyway. I've got a Mars Yard, and before this website comes on, because obviously this website's messed up for everybody, and I've got a Mars Yard. I've worn it. I've got a hole for it. Now I want another Mars Yard. But it's gonna cost me X amount of, of on the market, so I'm gonna to go to to my local Nike <laughs> restoration place. I'm gonna give it to them, so there's a hole in it, and I'm gonna give it up. But I want another pair, so I'm gonna kind of contact the guy and, and or plug in the in the place and say, when it's restored and when you've actually got them on the on the on the floor, let me know. I'm coming picking them up again, and I'm gonna pay half the retail that I paid when I first got them, however X months or years. Bro, I guarantee that happens. And this this website absolutely destroyed it for them because they'll probably end up putting it on the website first. <laughs> you know that happens. You yeah. know that happens, bro. You better send them anything. There's going to be some stipulations. They ain't, they ain't stupid now. No, 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 I know. They, 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 trying to, they trying to look out for us now. Don't, don't try to play them. They ain't going to go for it. <laughs> I know. Uh, but it, it's going to be... I'm, I'm, I'm excited. This is going to be fun and games. But, but what I'm disappointed in is it's only in the US at the moment, which is a bit boo boo. But um, like I, I would love to see it being rolled out into Europe, into Europe and UK and all the other, all the other markets as well. Asia as well. That would be dope, bro. Imagine. Can you can you imagine the mayhem it's going to cause worldwide? I don't even want to. <laughs> Oh man, Nike Restoration coming to a website near you for the US only. <laughs> Bring it to the UK, please. <laughs> right, cool, bro. Uh, it's it's that time, and this week we do have something to take to court, bro. <laughs> when resale is too high, damn resale. Hold up, hold up. When hype beats go too far, these damn hype beats. Order, order in the court, order. When the back door opens. Guilty. It's time for order in the court. The sneaker court 
of public opinion. Guilty! Welcome back to the Sneaker Court of Public Opinion with me, uh, Judge Public Opinion and Executioner. What is up, bro? Because today the court case is brought to you by Q. Go on, bro. Break it down. So, last week we were talking about the Yeezy Grammy. The Yeezy 2? What was it that won? Yeah. Yeezy 2. The, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The 2008 Grammy Award winning um, yeah. concert. Nike Yeezy Kanye Yeezy 2 uh, Grammy sample that Kanye wore at the Grammys selling for 80-something, 90% less than its uh, original selling price, which was 1.8. It's so 1.8 million. It sold for like 80,000, something like that. Uh, 80,000, some change. Uh, 180,000. 180,000. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. talked about the uh, game worn airship, Michael Jordan game worn airship selling for a whole lot less than its original selling value. Not original, but its last selling value. Come to find out, bro. <laughs> the company responsible is called Rares. Okay. And I want to show you the website for this company, this failing company. The website headline reads, invest in the culture. Invest in the world's rare sneakers today from as little as $1. <laughs> <laughs> Go, bro. <laughs> I told you, bro. Yeah. That stuff ain't had nothing to do with sneaker culture. This is 100% a vulture move, right? Here. This is a company, Rare, that is taking advantage of the pop culture. In general, the pop culture, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever is popular at the time, as far as products are concerned, they with it. They saw the you sneaker bubble. About. They saw the sneaker bubble expanding over the past five, six years through the pandemic and all that. And they had some money and they decided they they want to cap people. And this is what they did. Look at they got all type of look at all they got the Apple shoes. Yep. They got rare Air Force Ones. 85. This company, this company was actually, so this company was actually selling Pokemons. This actually company was selling a lot of things. Pokemon, colors, like uh, yeah, signed uh sports, basketball, baseball, football, cars. Um well it's so like what, uh what was the reason the, the, for the, the, the huh? So what was what was the reason for the emergency sale? Because they hemorrhaged in money, like they just took a cut to the juggler. Sheesh, damn, this company is going out of business, bro. And this is why they had to do emergency sale to recoup some of the money. So they actually, so they deflated the value to get rid of the product. A lot of people lost money on that. Oh, damn! That easy grand machine. Hold on, hold on. Air Force One PE. This is a Kobe shoe, apparently. Value fourteen thousand dollars. Invest now for seven dollars a share. This is this is see this this is why I get oh. mad at you. This this is oh. why I get mad at you. This is why I get mad at you. Oh. You you will this into existence. You. No, nah, lean you forward. No, no, no. Nah, lean forward. Let me let me take this graphic out of the screen. Because you are complicit in this case that we're bringing forward here against Rare. How am I complicit? So to say, hold on, hold on, hold on. You shut up. Because, <laughs> because Rares, Rares <laughs> is a product 
Rears is a product of the narrative that you present so much on this podcast about people being opportunistic and people viewing sneakers as stocks. And I always fight you on that. We just had a fight about that earlier. Yep, 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 yep. Right? It's the same principle. When I say stop, stop saying that type of stuff. Stop giving these platforms and these the people that are taking part in this vulturous behavior on the sneaker culture. Stop giving them acknowledgement. Stop giving them the power. Stop giving them these ideas that lead to a situation like theirs, which 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 also which also leads to points that I make on this podcast about people that don't know and people that want to be a, a following opportunists. They feel like yeah, yeah. opportunity here and, and somebody said, oh, all you got to do is put $7 down on the on these $14,000 sneakers and in three months when they sell, your money going to triple. No, it's not. No, it's not, bro. bro this bro, is not me, this is not sneaker culture, okay? This is culture, this is culture vulturing at its kind is 100 percent You be quiet. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no defense for this. There will be no objections. Don't make me put you in contempt, okay? This will be the first time. This will be the first time the judge actually get put in contempt because it and you know what? I I'm 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 gonna dismiss. I'm gonna dismiss the implication of of you in this, okay? I'm gonna be leaning leaning on you on this, okay? <laughs> uh, don't let don't let bro. me don't let me see you in here again. Don't let me call you out again on this, all right? <laughs> bro, the only reason why I raise it because I know there's foolish people that do it, and that's the only only reason right. why. Right, I've never, but don't never don't come on here, don't come on here because you just use the word foolish, all right? You just use the word foolish. So don't come back on this podcast trying to defend people for doing stupid stuff. But th- that's what that's it is. Really if ridiculous. You gonna, if you're gonna be stupid, if you want to be stupid, if you want to make stupid decisions, if you want to make stupid investments, it's on you. Okay. Do your research. Do your research. Find out what's really Whoa. going on. Find out how things really work before you start putting money into it, because that's where you end up losing money. And for all the idiots. All the idiots that invested in that Grammy Yeezy, it's on you. For all the idiots that invested in that Jordan Airship, buying <laughs> shares and sneakers, you're an idiot. It's on you. <laughs> For everybody that want to come on this website, because it's still open. So if you got money you want to you want to get rid of, you just got extra money laying around that you don't need, you want to get rid of it, you can send it to us if you want to. I Hit me up with a DM. i tell you my cash out. Just don't make the hit the pocket. But if you got extra money that you want to throw away, just you just you don't know what else to do with it. It's just, it's just it's in your way. It's, it's uncomfortable in my pocket. I just want to get rid of it. Go to Rare, yeah. right? And invest in, in you some of these these rare sneakers that uh, only people that really love this stuff. They got that's, the kit, that's only come. No, no, no. That's only come. Gone. They're not trying to sell it to you, bro. They got the that's only company I know where, where you can invest seven pounds and get seventy pence back. <laughs> Twenty dollars a share, <laughs> bro. This, this what we doing? Is this what we doing? Is this Who what we doing? Is investing? Who is investing in stocks for a look? Memorabilia. I understand it's all memorabilia, and why? And it's all art, contemporary art. So why is somebody investing in? Cont- Go get the piece. Go get the piece. Buy the piece. Don't be part of a a, a, a ownership of a, a thousand people that own that sneaker for like twenty dollars each. That's ridiculous. That's that's proper investment. That's stock investment. That's crypto investment. I never knew it got that bad. Even though I I, I knew there was foolish people out here. Even though I know people take uh, this kind of um, sneakers as stock, but I was thinking they were taking a, a stock value as the whole product itself, not one little bit, bro. Hey, you better start talking for you. You better start talking for you. End up being part of this case again. 
<laughs> the, more, the more you talk, the more I remember you you trying to say that sneakers are stock now, and me trying to fight you on that. Like, no, sneakers are sneakers. Sneakers are no. not stocks. These are not sneaker people that's driving the price of a sneaker up over a million dollars and paying for it. These ain't sneaker people, bro. These are investment people. These are opportunistic people. These are culture vultures. These are pyramid schemers. These are scammers. They're not to be trusted. But imagine me running up on somebody like, yeah, bro, I just I just grabbed it, the uh, 85 Carolina 1 OG ones yesterday. You like, for real? Yeah, where they at? Oh, let me pull up the website and show you a picture. <laughs> Yeah, I own, I own, I own 0.5% of them. Come on, man. And this oh, is man. what you call picking the laces off a dead sneaker, bro. <laughs> give us a give us a judgment, bro. <laughs> you fall going out of business, bro. And all y'all idiots that put y'all money in, y'all guilty, guilty. along with them. What yeah, you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guilty, bro. Guilty. <laughs> yeah. They going out of business, and all y'all gonna lose y'all money. Pull out while you can. Yeah. You stupid. You stupid. They stupid. stupid. That's what it is, bro. That's what it is, bro. Crazy. When resale is too high. Damn reseller. Hold up. Hold up. When hype beats go too far. These damn hype beats. Order, order in the court, order. When the back door opens. Guilty. It's time for order in the court. The sneaker court of public Guilty. opinion. <laughs> That's what you call. That's what you call. That's the third time I'm going to say this. That's what you call picking the laces off the remnants of a dead sneaker. That's culture, vulture, behavior. One. Oh, one, bro. Bro. Damn. Bro. <laughs> talk, about, talk about pyramid schemes. Damn, oh, bro. bro. What? That shot me. I, I knew, I knew you had something. I knew rares because you told me about them, and I left it at that because I know you was gonna go in a lot on, on, on a massive one on on the actual court. But I never knew that these people were picking up memorabilia for X amount and telling people buy a stock in this because we're gonna resell this for double the price, so you can double your money. Imagine the people that put in thousands and thousands of pounds in. And they're getting ninety percent back, bro. You put in a thousand pounds, you get a hundred pounds back. Yeah, that. It, the main thing, like I'm on, bro. Y'all think y'all think this a game, dog? Like we have fun with it, but this this is this is seriously not cool, bro. Like when as soon as you go to the page, you see other, you don't even see nothing else. This is all sneakers. You don't even see nothing else on the main page. They got other stuff, but it's all sneakers on the main page. Yeah. And you go yeah. to invest, the invest page, and it's all sneakers. All they got sneakers. the undefeated fours there as well, bro. Yeah, the Kobe, the, uh, the Kobe 3 8 pack. Like, I mean, what's music the valuation box, on that? Music box Air Force Ones. Oh my God. What's the valuation on, on the actual Kobe pack? Thirty thousand, six thousand for the music boss Air Force Ones, bro. We were just—I'm talking about Air Force Ones. Yo, this sneaker right here is. Oh my god! Valuation is eight thousand and one pa- one pound per per stock for the sneaker. So the, they they imagine, oh bro, that company is hemorrhaging money, especially when you see that what two sneakers they and those two sneakers that the the airships Jordan's airships and Kanye's Nike Yeezys were from this website, pretty much, yeah. Um, the Kanye is where I know I think the airships were too I'm not 100% on that but definitely the uh, it's it's ridiculous bro 
this, <laughs> so I'm, this, this, this is just to, guide, to let you guys know that not everything is don't don't invest in foolish things and uh, quick money is not real money i'm gonna say that and you the the, the thing that you will never get as uh, this is just foolish who do actually did this who actually who actually invested in this if you invest in this drop us a message because that's the first time i'm hearing yo talk about culture vulture bro I get it from from a aspirational standpoint, but from a cultural standpoint, this is this is trash. Uh, you know what? You you're better off going to the shop, waiting in the queue, and trying to get yourself a limited sneak and reselling that rather than investing in a stock. Bro, it's just sneakers, though. Like, why why is it yeah. why is it sneakers? Sneakers did this. Like, uh, I don't see nobody. Like, maybe art probably got you know multiple investors and in some um you know historical art pieces and statues and stuff like that but sneakers bro you got multiple investors in a shoe you go in there half you're gonna go half with me on on, on a pair of kobe's this is this is what happens when this is what happens when hype goes bad bro <laughs> you want bro you want to half on these kobe's bro my my other partner he said he got some money too get out of here bro yeah, y'all, y'all, and, y'all sick, y'all nasty. And you, you know what? You know what? This literally, you know what? I, I can go into multitude levels to this. I'm not even joking. This is this is literally what happens when Kobe's go uh, when um, hype goes um, bad. Like when people get sucked into like the hype, hype and trends being up there, and then you all of a sudden, oh, you know what? If you're not first, you're lost. That's all I'm gonna say. If you're not first, you're lost, especially with stocks. If you don't know what the stock's gonna do, and you invest when it's at its peak, it's going down. You're lost, bro. You're gonna lose, and don't yo 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 i'm i'm not throwing i'm not I'm, I'm, you know what you know what allowed this i'm throwing allegations right because at the end of the day right this company right could be buying these sneakers for a high price getting your money that you invested not telling how many people invested in it and then going to the auction and buying it for the low low and keeping 90 percent of your income that they actually got as they still got the sneaker bro Let's not even go into that because you know what? Stuff like that happens. You know what, bro? I'm I'm sick of all y'all. I'm going to hide at Area 59. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Area not Area 59. <laughs> it's Area 59. <laughs> Area fifty Nike. Nike, yeah, Area fifty Nike. That that's where he's going. He's going to hide in in the reinforcement barracks of Nike's new um, yeah. shipment. In what is it? No, where Alabama. Right. I'm sitting there and play with my shoes, bro. <laughs> Fiddling your laces. <laughs> Yo. Done. This world, this world, this world, this world ain't for everybody. Don't get culture vulture. Don't get in. Like you said last week, it's not about the hype. Trust me, guys. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. Don't get fooled. Oh, don't get fooled out here, brothers, guys. But yes, that was, this was episode 85 of the Shooter Podcast. Loads of mischief, loads of allegations being thrown this week, especially to the, the aftermarket of, of sneakers. But guys, go in for the sneakers you want because we all love the sneakers we love. And you know what? This week is I was on this amazing sneaker high um, and it made me realize how much I really do love what I do. And he's given me more newer, newer, renowned energy to keep grinding and working harder. So I would just recommend you guys just sit back sometimes and reflect what it is and enjoy life. That's all I'm going to say. For sure, bro. Put dirt on Chicago's too. <laughs> hey, is that bubble gum? Chicago. No, there's grass. <laughs> Don't worry. It, it won't be there by the end of the day. Uh, episode 85 man we're gonna get up out of here um appreciate everybody shout out 99 shout out darwin shout out renzo uh appreciate y'all bro the right with y'all 100 percent. shout out to you have a cool bro have a great day great week great month great rest of the year and please do remember that nike Got the 60 day return policy. And you can actually wear the product 
they return and they get back. Your ass. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, guys. And it's given to you by the Nike experts, the secret, the secret cheat codes by the Nike experts. There you go, bros. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> peace out. Peace out. Peace. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>